So everybody come on over. We get ready to get started here. Just a couple things up front if you need water. Um, there's a, if you go, go down the driveway, there's a black four one right in front of us, a drinking fountain. And if you brought water, I encourage you to pour it out because this water is really good here. It comes out of the glaciers in the Olympics and, and it's 7.3. It's alkaline. It's really, and it's quite delicious, quite good. If you need to use the bathroom, if you continue on around the house, when you get to the end, the end of the house, you look off to the left, you'll see a little a wood-fired oven. The next building next to it is a, is a, is a bathroom and you're welcome to it. Um, welcome to you all to come today. It's a beautiful day. It's not raining. I'm thankful. And um, what this isn't is, is not about a, a, um, a technique or a method. There's a lot of those out there and they're all hard work. I've done some of them and I can tell you they're all hard work. What this is about is about a connection with the Creator who did it really easy for us and provided everything we need for free. And it, he's so fun to work with. And so I just want you to get that it's just, it's, you know, and again, if someone were to ask you, where on the planet is the most fertile soil? The People always go to the forest because we know that's the best. And how is that soil created and maintained? By, By needles, leaves, and twigs, wood chips. So it's so basic. It's not like rocket science. It's not like you have to twist your brain around and try to fit. It's happening all around us. And it's just so pathetic we're not looking. And so what I've basically done here is I've, I've made my place the forest floor. I put in my garden, in my yard, wood chips, and just created a forest floor, and everything's growing great. And it's really fun just to enjoy it because it's how it was made. And what I'm finding is that every year it gets bigger and sweeter, and I'm doing no work. And that just is really fun, not having to labor to get all this good abundance. Because I, when I used to do it, do it like I was told, I worked so hard to fail, it was pathetic. I mean, I worked really hard to fail, and it just was <sighs> no fun. Or this, it's just fun because it works so well. I like to I like to show contrast because I th I think you know because we've been under the influence of the liar, we don't really see how simple it is. And so I love contrast because it helps to open our eyes to see like whoa that works you know. So if you if you, anybody know about trees this size, this is a sequoia tree. You know where you're standing and quite a ways beyond you're standing on the root ball. These roots are going way out there. And so for you gardeners, any gardeners here? If you wanted to plant a plant next to a tree that's that size, what would you encounter when you tried to access the soil? Roots. Nothing but roots. Yeah. And you couldn't access the soil. I want you to observe that rhododendron growing in the root ball of that sequoia. We're talking like it's right next to it. <laughs> Look how full and hell, it's, this, is a, this is one of my favorite rhododendrons because it, it does so much color for you. It has a fall color. You can see it's coming there. Yeah. See how it's turning, turning like this, you know, um, reddish nice color. But if you look closely at the density of the foliage, and if you look really closely at the hundreds of little buds that's getting ready to bloom next year, you're realizing this plant's doing quite well. It's not showing any sign of depletion, like there's not enough to go around. And what gets my attention is that in these wood chips, there's such amazing life force that nothing challenges it. That tree, that root ball, isn't taking away from this. In contrast, I want you to observe the rhododendron in my neighbor's yard next to it. Well, see, these, these things get my attention. I have eyes that work quite well, and I see, and I'm looking at these demonstrations that are screaming at me. Look at the difference. No comparison. And what, and what really gets my attention is why. You see, that, that rhododendron has wood chips around it. But if you look close to the ground, you'll see that they have landscape cloth. Oh, right. And you see, they thought landscape cloth would keep weeds out. If you, look, if, you, if you look closely, you'll see weeds are growing just fine, the wood chips on the landscape cloth. Mm -hmm. And what the landscape cloth is doing, it's stopping all the life force from the wood chips from feeding the plant. And so instead of getting, solving a solution, a problem, they created a problem. And they paid money and expended labor to do this. So I'm just wanting you to get that what the influence we're getting, what we're being told, is not true. And so just, just as a, um, or something to hold on to and take home with you, and this will really help you in your, in your process, if you're told something that's not happening in nature, there's no demonstration in nature that's doing that, 
rest assured you're being lied to. It's not true. It's not true, really. And it's just, it's so amazing when you start connecting to all the things we're told, there's no demonstration in nature. Considering, you know, our agriculture perspective, we're told, in, they're told to till the soil. In nature, there's no, there's no tilling. The soil's never disturbed. And we find that when we do till, what happens to the soil? Dies. It goes away. It blows away, drives away. And what does nature do to correct it? It tries to recover it with weeds. It's trying to put a cover back because its nose is not safe. And so it cut, cut, and, and the whole concept of fertilizing, there's no fertilizing happening in nature. Crop rotation, there's no crop rotation happening in nature. Seeds fall in the same place every year. No one's watering. And everything's quite green and doing quite well. And so I'm so getting that if I'm told something, I don't see it happening in nature, don't go there. And usually, if you look at it closely, usually what you're being told is connected to something you have to buy to maintain it. Someone's got something to sell you. Yeah. Where in nature, it's all free. If you look at everything that covers my, my yard here, it was created in nature for free and it's renewable. And it's non-toxic. Conversely, all the stuff they're selling you is expensive, limited, and usually toxic. It's just so across the board obvious when you start connecting the dots because it's just like amazing. So one of the things you're told in school, if you go to school to learn about doing agriculture, is that wood products will tie up nitrogen and make your soil acidic. Anybody heard that before? That's the general rule of thumb. I want you to look at the color of the foliage on my tree and help me connect to a nitrogen tie-up. I'm, I'm being real. You know, excuse me. <laughs> I'm not seeing a nitrogen tie-up happening here. In fact, I'm seeing just the opposite. <laughs> it's like way greener than any fertilizer I've ever seen. And what's really getting my attention, you know what time of year this is? This is September. We're going into fall. And I want you to notice the new growth on the tips of these branches like it's spring. These trees don't even know how to stop growing. They don't know how to act in the fall. <laughs> Everything else, you look at my neighbor's trees, you see they're all going dormant. These are putting on new growth. It's like, excuse me? <laughs> and I'm you're telling me I have a nitrogen tie-up, which is what puts on new growth and vigor and health? And it's like, uh-uh. <laughs> That's not what's happening here. We're a little bit late in the season, but I want to, just as we walk by, I want to show something. I noticed this here is quite interesting. You see my neighbor's cherry trees? And this is a, a, an amazing contrast. You see this cherry tree right here? This is a royal and cherry. That's, just, that's the variety. And it, and it was planted 37 years ago when I came here. I was here when my neighbors planted it. If you see that royal and cherry tree right back there, that's the same tree. The difference is that's 17 years old. It's 20 years younger than this one. Compare, compare the differences. And we'll get up close, you'll see the size difference. You see, these are the kind of things that arrest my attention. I mean, I can't miss this. As, you know, I'm, I'm watching this. And, you know, I planted that tree. And I'm seeing this. And I'm looking at this amazing, you know, event. And I just can't argue with evidence. It's like, whoa. You see, they're both in the same place as far as lighting and elevation. That has no covering on the earth. That has a skin on the earth. It's huge. What's really got my attention this year? You see my, my neighbor's cherry tree right here? Well, you see my cat, Sir, you see it's, go, it's going in the fall, starting to get a fall color, but you can see it's quite full and quite happy. You notice the branches next to my cat, Sir, tree, how much greener and thicker the leaves are right. than the ones behind it? Just on his side, yes. Well, you know why? Those roots have discovered my wood chips. Yeah. I'm, just being, I'm just telling you, I'm not blind. I live here. And I'm watching these changes happening. I'm thinking like, wow, they found my wood chips. <laughs> and they're saying, ah, oh, there's good food here. Let's move in. Does and you can, ever notice that you have wood chips and how yours are doing compared to his? Can I tell you, they're, 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 they're nice women, the three sisters who live here. But the problem they have is they're well-educated. <laughs> they went to school and they have good degrees and they know that what I'm doing will not work. <laughs> The modern day liberal right there. I'm just being real with you. <laughs> All they have to yep. do is look. But, my, but when your mind knows better, yeah. 
you over you override your reason. I'm just saying it's huge. It's significant how this mind is not my helper. And you see, they went to school and they know that what I'm doing won't work. They're convinced. Even though their eyes and their taste buds are revealing a whole other story because the mind can't get it, they remain in that state of unbelief. And do they know crowds come from all over the world every week? Yeah, and they don't understand why. <laughs> and they have to put up signs in their yard, don't park here. <laughs> you know? Do and, they live in Seattle? No, they live right here. Oh. But, but, but I'm just, I'm, it's, you know, you know, watching these events happening and seeing people's responses, and you know, you know the, the hardest people to get it are the ones with PhDs. It's hilarious. I mean, I, honestly, I had a PhD guy come here and he wanted me to know he had a PhD, like he's talking about it. You know, I, I'm a PhD biologist, you know, and, and, and what he really got my attention when he says, and what you're doing can't work. I love that when people tell me that. I says, well, let's walk around and observe how it's not working. <laughs> and so when he came to my, my garden, he sees my celery, he just stops dead in his tracks. He says, there's no way you get celery this tall and this dark green without fertilizer. I says, sir, I've never fertilized. He says, I don't believe you. I'm going to come back and test your soil. So he comes back and look, in a couple of weeks, with a little black bag, and he's testing my soil. You know what he found in my soil? Wood chips. <laughs> my wood chip soil? So the pH was 7.0, center. And he's flipping out because his PhD education said that's impossible. Wood chips make your soil acidic. And he's, you can just see he's racking his brain because this is rocking his boat. His whole basis for his education and his, his income is based on a lie and he's seeing it on his machine and he's just not getting it. And so I'm watching him rack him and says, well, come over here. Let me, um, let me show you this and have you explain it to me. Now, this is late in the season, but I have a hydrangea over here. Does anybody know about hydrangeas? Yes. If you have acid soil, the, the color is blue. If you have alkaline soil, they're pink. All summer long, and in his presence, this hydrangea had both at the same time pink and blue flowers. <laughs> so I bring, the, I, bring the, I bring him over here. We'll walk over there, but, but you, can, you can slightly see it, but it was, you know, it's over now because they're, they're all finished. But, um, but I'm asking, this is now, I'm rubbing it in now, PhD. Explain to me why my hydrangea has both pink and blue flowers. And he's looking at that and he's just silent. I says, you're not talking to me? And you have a PhD? Excuse me, you know everything. Why aren't you telling me why the colors are happening both at the same time? And he just, I says, well, you just told me why. I asked my mentor and he said, because it's 7.0 center balance, both colors happen at the same time because it's balance, it's center. I love the Creator. Center is awesome. You see, in that environment, you can grow everything. You don't have to adjust. And when you try to adjust pH in soil, it doesn't last. It's an ongoing maintenance thing. It's up and down and you're always having to do it. But I'll take you over here a little, little later and you're going to see I, I have hydrangea, excuse me, um, lavender, which is an alkaline plant growing right next to, they're actually touching a blueberry. <laughs> and they're both thriving in the same place. I just love the Creator. This whole idea of easy, no work, is just so fun. It's so amazing. Let's walk over. I want to show you a really, a, a really cool demonstration of the Creator's character, which is forgiveness and redemption. Does anybody know about ginkgo trees? No one? Ginkgo. It's, a, it's one of the oldest known trees that exists. It grows very slowly. It's one right here. You see the foliage? You see how, it, how beautiful that foliage looks like maidenhair fern. It's really, really beautiful. When I first came here, because I love ginkgos, I planted this, a tree here. And shortly after I planted it, my power line failed to the house. Apparently when they backfilled, a rock must have, must have knocked off the insulation and it failed. And so the power company came to fix it. And in doing so, to expose it, they killed my ginkgo. It just died. It just totally died. But out of the root system came multiple shoots, and I saved three. <laughs> now you've never anywhere in the world seen a ginkgo tree as a triple leader. Are you hearing me? You've always seen them as a single leader. I have a triple leader ginkgo in my yard. It looks really cool. Mm -hmm. And I, this is so reveals the nature of the Creator. What looked dead 
came back in multiples, far nicer than it was up front. I love that. It's just, it's just so reveals his amazing redemptive nature. It's just, it's so good. Yeah. <laughs> So, for those who, um, years ago, this space we're going to walk on over here used to be all grass. And it was such a difficult thing to deal with because my wife's a midwife and, and people come here all year long for their prenatals in the wintertime. When this ground that I have is clay and rock gets wet, it doesn't drain. And so I got standing water and it gets very mucky and they make big holes and it's just like every spring I had to come back and grade it out. And I got to mow and we, and so this year I just thought, you know what, this isn't working. I'm going to cover this all with wood chips. <laughs> Because that works. Here's, here's what's so cool about it. Now, you, you see this traffic is here today. This happens every week and, and many times more. And then all week long, people come here with their cars to see my wife's um, on her prenatals. I want you to notice as you walk on this, how buoyant it feels under your feet. It's not compacting. <laughs> with all this car traffic, this material isn't compacting. Look at it. Look how soft it is. Look how it moves. It's like you're walking on a carpet. Mm -hmm. And what I'm getting is that in some days something, some day, some, something changes and there's a need to grow food, mm -hmm. I have instantly yeah. a community garden in place. Mm -hmm. And as the longer I wait, the better it gets. Mm -hmm. I'm just, and watching this year is these kind of events. You see this, this little clump of grass right here? Here's what really gets my attention. We just came through a summer. We didn't have much rain. And to give you an example of what that looks like, you see my neighbors with the grass over here? You see the color of it? You see this little chunk of grass right here that I didn't plant? Are you seeing that? Look at that. We're in the same space, the same lack of rainfall, and look at the color of that. <laughs> a seed blew in in the summer with no rain, and it's sprouted and it's growing that well in an environment with no rain. Right. I'm, just, I'm just telling you, these things just scream at me. It's just like, ah, it's powerful, you know? And so you just know that this space, as it sits here, it's just gonna get better and better. You can see, see that chunk of grass, look how green that is over there in the, in the center there. It's, just, it's awesome, you know? It was so nice. Um, you see, I, I have a pile of wood chips over here that was just brought to me this Friday. It's just, you know, it's just so nice, it's, you know, um, it's, they were kind of, I hardly ever get them to come out this far, but they did. And um, something that's, you know, that's really amazing about those wood chips is that we're going to go dig in and see. In just a short time after they dump them, all this fungus and life stuff starts happening inside of it that was never imported, which is so, is so amazing how nature is so designed to break things down. It's just, it's incredible how not, it wasn't put there. And all of a sudden, just as, as it sits there, it just starts naturally breaking down because that's how God designed everything to turn back to dirt. And everything in nature is built in with this beautiful process. We'll head over here and, and um, start tasting some food. Because I want you while you're here today as much as possible to sample things and to really um, notice the difference in flavor as well as water content. The water content is really a, an amazing thing that, I, that I've noticed. If you look, at, if you look in, in, in the, on the planet, what is the planet 75% of? Water. What's your body 75% of? Water. And you're going to find in all the produce you eat here and fruit, it's 75% water. Because that's the, that's the design. Now, if you want, you can stick your hands in there and, and mess with it because it's really nice stuff. Because I want you to experience stuff. It's just really cool. Just, you know, put, put your hand in there and you'll notice as you go down into it, it starts getting really warm because it's composting. Is that the typical condition that you receive it in normally? Yeah. Pretty similar to that? Year round, yeah. So that's mm -hmm. kind of what we can expect. In yeah, the this, this is what it looks like when, they, when it comes. That's now, you see, lot, you, saw, yeah, you can see, you see all you see, this, 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 was a, this was a spruce. You can tell by its foliage. You know, and if you dig in there, you can just see, uh, as you get into it, you can feel it gets warmer as you go down. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, that's warm. You can, you can see that heat. You see, that's the composting process. Right. And very shortly, you'll start, as you get into it, you'll start seeing these white molds and stuff that just start naturally breaking it down. 
It's just so, you know, and if you pick up the odor, it has a nice smell to it. It's just such amazing stuff. And here's, and here's the genius of the creator. When do farmers who go to college to learn how to grow stuff fertilize? Spring. Which is really stupid when you think about it. Because you're planting in spring. And it takes time for fertilizer to get to root level. You know the creator fertilizes? Every fall. And here's the genius wisdom of it. You see, as he puts his material over the, over the ground, needles, leaves, and twigs, he sends rain all winter. You see, as this material lays on the ground, you're seeing it happen here, it begins to compost. As water goes through it, it creates compost tea, which builds the soil for next spring's growth. And he uses gravity to do all the work. I'm just telling, when you start looking at it, it's just so genius, so wise, so awesome. And today, if you look, if you look at agriculture, compost tea is a rage in agriculture. It's probably the finest fertilizer that exists. And people pay big money for it. And they're out there t you know, watering with it, but about the second or third watering after they do, it's gone, they gotta do it again. I just laugh, he says, when you put a wood chip cover in the ground, compost is happening. And every time it rains or you water, you get compost tea. We're talking 365 days a year, seven days a week, you know, um, not ending. And gravity is doing all the work, and so it's all free. And it works quite better than you importing it, you know. It's just, and again, just the cover creates this most amazing, healthy environment for us to grow in. And it's so simple and so genius, wise. Fall is the time to apply, so we're coming there. So all you guys who haven't had a garden going or you have one going, this is the perfect time of year if you get this cover down. You're totally on time because this is the time to get that cover down. So if you haven't done it before, you are here at the right time because this is when you want to apply it. And you, you'll come across, what, what amazes me is this, this just so changes the soil below it. When you have hard pan and just, you're gonna see when we get, when I take you to show you my soil, you're gonna, you think you had bad stuff, nothing as bad as what I got. How this covering just changes it all. Underneath it gets soft and damp and worms start coming and all these life forms. And it's just so amazing how it all gets changed. And when you realize in nature, there's no hard pan. If there's nothing, not, you know, it happens when you take the cover off. And when you, when you put the cover back, it all changes again. It's just, it's just so, it's so beautiful <laughs> how it, it works. It smells so nice. It does. Too. Yeah. Everything in nature is nice. It's all nice. And it's just, and, and again, this toxic stuff we use, these, these herbicides and pesticides and fungicides, they stink and they're toxic and they're killing everything. And we think that's okay. It's just, it's so bizarre how, how the disconnect just erases our brains so we don't think. <clears throat> Will you spread this out now or let it cook for a while? It's, well, I'll get around to it when it's convenient. Okay. <laughs> and it doesn't matter when I, when I apply it because as it sit here, it's all being, you know, um, held in place. And what I'm finding is that it's all good. You know, and I, I have stuff. I have stuff over in Swim, you know, that have probably been there for like years and I'll bring that in. And so at any point in time I get it, it's fine, you know, because it's, it's always in a state of breakdown. It's always turning back to dirt. You know, until it's totally dirt, you, um, and while it's sitting here, everything below is being upgraded, you know, because it's just gravity works. And so it's just, at any point in time, you can, you can use it. Just being here is just a nice resource. It smells nice. It's just like, you know, it's like, you know, so at my convenience, I was thinking like, I'm gonna have to cover these strawberries over here. This is close, I can, I can do, it's just so many cool things about it. But I just love that it was brought here just so you can see it, you know, smell it because this is um, not, not, not usually here. And so this is just an, an advantage we, we, get to, we get today. I want you to come over to the garden. I want you to notice this tree on the corner over here. Do you know where I live? This is Western Washington. And it's 530 feet above sea level. You know where fig trees grow? Israel. Not here. <laughs> they grow in, in Israel, California, warm, you know, Mediterranean type climates. And I had tons of wonderful figs. They were awesome. And you can see the trees doing quite well. It's not looking like it's struggling here. Does anybody grow Swiss chard? Are you looking at the size of this? <laughs> Is that cool? I came from Southern California. Um, my nephew told me to watch your videos, so I watched it like five times. Oh. And I 
started doing some wood chips, and I did plant some Swiss chard, and we're in a terrible drought down there, mm-hmm. so I, I gave up. I quit watering everything. The Swiss chard and the wood chips stayed alive for months longer than anything else. Isn't that cool? Yeah. And what I so love about it is you start experiencing this, you start seeing things that awaken you mm-hmm. through the power of it. How incredible it works! It's just—it's so beautiful, and what I'm what I'm so enjoying is that uh, over time, every year, it just gets better and better and better. You see how she's moving that with her foot? Uh, is, I'm glad you are because I, I want you to get get you, you see if you're, if you see how nice and soft that is. And uh, let me can you help me? I want you to where she did did that with your foot, stomp on it and try to compact it. Oh, she's doing it. okay. Now do it. keep 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 doing it. Now go back and move it. <laughs> You're not compacting it. Right. And this is this is this again when you think about oxygen, oxygen is the first ingredient to life. The first. Without it, things die quickly. And in the soil, oxygen is necessary for plant growth, plant life. When you have hard compacted soil, there's no oxygen. In this environment, you can feel under your feet, it's just loaded with oxygen because it won't compact. And so there's space for oxygen. It's just, again, it's just so amazing, so genius how beautiful it is. The looser soil is able to breathe better. Yeah, because it has, it has space. You see, oxygen fills space. Right. And so if things are compacted, there's no, there's no space, no oxygen will be there. But you can feel the buoyancy under here. Mm-hmm. It's all kinds of space, airspace, and so oxygen lives there. Right. You know, so it's just it's just so amazing. And here's the, here's the thing about the insanity of what we're doing. You see, when you till soil, as soon as you till it, you water it and you walk on it. What what happens to the soil? It compacts. Yeah. And so as it compacts, the oxygen is being pushed out. Here's something that really gets my attention. When I was in Los Angeles growing up as a kid, in the 50s, water bottles did not exist. There was no such thing. And Los Angeles is a very hot place. It gets, you know, 90, 100 degrees, you know, all summer long. And we're working all day long in this heat. We're not packing water bottles and we're not thirsty. You know why? Because back then, there was air in the soil and plants had roots and they took up water and were hydrated with the food we're eating. The food we ate had water in it and that water hydrated us. What I think is so amazing in just a short time, that's all changed. In Seattle, where it rains all the time, people are drinking water with their meals because there's no water in the food. And they're thirsty. It's just huge. So I want you to sample stuff. Come over here and, and, and pick off some, some of these leaves of, of kale and observe the water content as well as the sweet flavor. Now you see, you know from experience that, um, now br- break it off at the base, don't leave a stump. You know from experience that this thick end of kale is going to be tough and stringy. You follow, are you hearing me? Mm-hmm. I want someone to start there and talk to me as you eat it. <laughs> start the stem. I'm not hearing anybody talking. What, what type of kale? This kale here is a, a unique variety. Someone, this is grown in Kenya, Africa. I've never grown it before, but I really like it. So I'm going to, I'm going to collect seed. And, uh, and and because it's just it's really good, so yeah, all along you just 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 pick it off because I want you to sample stuff. Are you noticing the stem is not bitter? Yeah, mm-hmm. very tender, sweet, and, and 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 it's and it's sweet. Mm-hmm. Can I tell you about what I what I heard about sweet and bitter? That's good. Eat the stem. Just you'll you'll get back to the leaf, but I just want you to good. notice. Isn't that good? Here's what I heard about bitter and sweet. When I, when I first did the film in, in 2011, it came out in August 2011, I had people coming here, farmers were coming here like in February, and I didn't have anything to give them but kale. And every work got hundreds of people coming, and people were all saying, this is not bitter, this is sweet. Mm. And so when I hear something over and over nonstop, I kind of sense I'm supposed to learn something. So I asked God, what's up with this bitter sweet? Mm. And he told me it was huge. Mm. Track with me, watch my body language. Mm. See, plants that are growing in compacted hard ground <clears throat> it's hard for them to live. It's, and they, they're struggling to survive, to set their roots into that hard, compacted stuff. They're laboring. And they're expressing in their flavor their bitterness. Life was hard. And they're communicating in their flavor they're bitter. It was a tough life. Conversely, when stuff grows in this totally loose, aerated stuff, 
There's no resistance. They grew quickly and, t and no effort. And they're expressing their ease of life in their sweetness. Life was sweet. It wasn't hard. That's it's huge. It's, and, and what I'm getting is that all of nature is so clearly communicating mm -hmm. truth to us. It's all, if you're just listening and looking, it's just totally amazing. Now you can see, see I've got um, several varieties of kale here. There's, there's that lacinato, you should sample some of that. That's a really nice kale there. And behind it, the Russian kale. And then if you notice behind on this fence, this is another thing that doesn't grow here. Grapes do not grow in Western Washington at this elevation. And I want to tell you something awesome about this grape. This was, this was miraculous. Two years ago, we're talking two years, this was almost this big. And it died. I don't know why, but the whole thing just totally died. We're talking like died. This, the, 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 the trunks were totally hollow. So I cut it back to the ground. Are you hearing me? I cut it back to the ground, and this is what's happened in two years oh, from a amazing. stump. Wow. I'm just telling you, man, it, 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 is, it is wow. It just, and these are the kind of things that show me the power and life that's in this nutrient-dense soil. That is, you look at the size of that, how far that goes. One plant in two years from a stump. Oh. And it produces grapes. Oh, you can see, oh, go oh, over there. There's, oh, grape, there's grapes hanging. And you can go, you go, 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 go pick I some. Did. Yeah, they're good. They're they're, 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 you know, it's not, it's, it's a, this is the only one that will grow here. It's called the um, oh, autolucan. It's, it's a small green seedless, but it has a nice flavor. Oh, yeah. And I'm getting ripe grapes. Mm -hmm. And this is Western Washington at 530 feet above sea level where that shouldn't be happening. But the reason why this happens, there's a, there's a couple, there's a feature here that's, that's very, very effective. You see that wood pile behind there? Mm -hmm. That acts as a heat sink. Mm -hmm. That knocks out the wind and it, oh, it's a massive material that holds heat. And so this radiating heat. I have the same grapes in my chicken pen. We'll see here soon, but I don't have the volume I have here. I get a few, but not like this. So again, these little, these little microclimates, little, little things you can do to, to increase heat are, are very effective. So you didn't change the wood, the amount of wood chips after you cut back the uh, the grape. No, nothing just changed. Cut I just cut it back to a stump, and that's what came back from the stump. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm just, I'm just telling you, it's just I love these um, experiences I'm having to validate and show me the power of life that's in this soil. Because I mean, I, I've been doing this for like 60, 61 years, mm -hmm. and I've never seen growth like this in that kind of a time frame. Ever. Well, again, look at this. Look at this cherry tree. Look at the size. Look at the wood compared to that one. It's 20 years younger. The same tree. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> this is screaming. Look at the color of the leaves compared to that. I'm just telling you, man. It's yelling loudly. Like, this is significant. This is not like slightly different. You have to try to really look to see. This is like screaming. Like, ah, this is vitality. This is vigor. This is like. How it was made to be. And then, how old would you estimate this soil is? Or? These are these, you see this material here. You yeah. see how how nice this is actually um, yard waste developed by my chickens. I take all my yard waste to the chickens, yeah. and they turn it back to this wonderful soil. Okay. This is all compost for my chicken pen. You know, you see it's different than the wood chips. Yeah. And so when you, and, and my whole garden's that way. But you're going to see the, in the moment here that stuff in my orchard in the wood chips is growing just as well. What I'm finding about the wood chips is it's, it is the most ideal material to grow stuff in. What got my attention last year, we had a really significant drought. We're talking like major drought last year. And I had to water my garden quite a bit. But in my orchard, as this year also, I'm not watering anything. And I got produce growing in the wood chips that didn't get watered. And what I'm realizing is the compost is really good. It's wonderful. But it doesn't have the water retention quality of wood, wood products. And let me explain to you why. The creator opened something when I started asking. If you look, you look at that sequoia tree there along my driveway, how green, dark green, those needles are in the tips. Right. And I want to be real with you, miracle Grow at no level will do that. I don't care how much you use, you'll never get it that green with miracle Grow. And this is all being supported by the needles. There's no fertilizer happening. These are all the needles falling to the ground that are creating the life force to create that incredible green material. Now I want you to to, 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 to use your mind and track with me. How's the water from the ground getting out to the ends of those branches to create those bright green needles? How's it being moved there? There's no pump. Are you hearing me? And it's opposing gravity. It's the 
capillary mm -hmm. action in the yeah. in the wood cells. Mm -hmm. Wood cells. Mm -hmm. And I'm so getting the power of wood, wood to lift, to distribute, and to retain water. And when witches on the ground, it's the same wood. It's, when you start connecting dots and pay attention, you get like, this is genius. This is amazing. And they're finding, scientists are finding that wood chips at night, laying on the ground, absorb water out of the air, out of the dew, store it in their cells, and release to the roots growing around them. It's just like amazing stuff. And you know what else is so awesome about wood chips? Wood chips have no brain. You follow me? They're in an object. When there's no water at my place all summer, didn't rain all summer, and it's damp <laughs> underneath, right. it's telling me it has the capacity to retain water. Mm -hmm. Just down the road, we have a rainforest, 70 miles down the road, the, the whole rainforest, that gets 14 feet of annual rainwater. Not inches, 14 feet. In your mind, picture 14 feet of water on the ground, what that looks like. And you saw in my film, if you watched my film, the girls are out walking out there in the rainforest, and it's like walking on this. It's not boggy, it's not soggy. Here's the thing that racks my brain. Those wood chips with no brain, when there's 14 feet of water, bring the water to the surface and evaporate it, and at my place when there's no water, they retain it. I'm, I'm, I don't know about you, but this is rocking my boat, man. This is like genius design. This is like, way beyond this brain can, can contract this is huge no brain and there's too much water displaces not enough retains ah, it's just again genius amazing stuff and you know what else is interesting if you look at my orchard you see no leaves on the ground now my trees are deciduous they drop all their leaves every winter i'm not raking them up because i like leaves leaves are very beneficial but we live in in um jefferson county and the wind during the winter time really whips across here. It's amazing. It picks up from the Hood Canal, just rips across Jefferson County, hits Squim Bay, and totally dies. It's amazing how it works. But in the winter time, the wind blows so hard here that all the leaves in my orchard, they're out of here. I can't even find my pasture. They're out in the woods someplace. But what amazes me is the wood chips don't move. Now, track with me. Which is heavier, dirt or wood chips? considerably heavy. What happens when, when, when the wind blows on dirt? It blows away. It blows away. And it's heavier. Yeah. You know why wood chips don't move? Because dirt, dirt particles are all the same size and they do not connect. Mm. They're opposing one another. This material at different sizes all interconnect and stay together. You know who thought this up? I'm just telling you, man, this, this genius design in nature, man, is awesome. In my backyard, I've got completely wood chips, and we had a, uh, a small tornado come through Arizona about a month ago, and it uprooted the trees next door, and I didn't lose a wood chip. Don't you love it? I'm just telling you, see, these are the kind of things, I didn't, I didn't ask for this. It, this is, I'm just telling you, these are the kind of things that so validate this incredible genius design. It's just like huge. It's just awesome. So, does anybody grow strawberries? Where do they tell you to plant strawberries? Full sun. Full sun. Full sun in, in a mound. I want you to notice the strawberries growing under my cherry tree in full shade. Boy. We're not talking partial shade, we're talking full shade. Look at the, this is, this is after a summer when it's been really dry and I didn't water at all. Look at the color of the foliage. Look at the length of the, of the, of the um, you know, suckers coming out. I mean the new growth. And just get, you can tell this is quite happy here. And this is growing in full shade, not full sun, full shade. I'm just so enjoying doing all the things that say you can't. It's just fun and I'm, I'm getting like growing stuff under trees is really the best place to grow stuff. Not like it's okay, it's like the best. How are those grapes? Delicious. They are. They're unbelievably full of water. Yeah. Are you seeing that? Yeah. Are you seeing the water content? And, and these are never got watered. This is not about water on the ground. It's about plants' roots' capacity to take up water. It's, it's amazing. It's remarkable. It is. And, and I, this is what I, I want you to experience. 
this huge water content in everything because that's how it was made. It's just, it's awesome. So all summer long, Paul, you don't water anything? I water stuff in my garden. And when I want to, when I, when I, I'm going to take you over and show you a squash plants in the blue way. When I first plant seeds, I water till they're up mm -hmm. after that I'm done. Now what I'm finding, water is a real asset. If you want quicker growth, water really, because see as water goes through this, it creates compost tea. Mm -hmm. And so water will really speed up and encourage, but it's not necessary. If you, if you can't, if you have no water, see when I came here, I had no water. And you see how my trees here? They have not been watered or fertilized for 37 years ever, ever. And we've had droughts and they've never been affected because the wood chips hold the water. But if you want things to grow quicker, water really helps because it's releasing compost tea. So it's giving more access to the plant of food, of life force. And so water is a real asset, but in a condition where you don't have it, you can still grow things. Okay. Yeah, ideally, if you're living in where I am, yeah. So and so and so, what what I encourage you to do is what I'm doing, is that when I have challenges, I just ask God, God, how would you approach this? What would you do? And then you just listen, and you'll be walking across your yard someday, and all of a sudden you'll feel a warm spot, and it'll bring to your attention, like you see how much warmer it is here. Well, that's where you can do this. So if you're listening, after you ask the question, you're going to find all this input saying, here's where it is. Here's how you do it, because he's very helpful. God's very, very helpful, you know, and, and, so, and the word is so plain, it says you have not because you don't ask. Now what I'm doing now is, is ma making an effort to do things that you can't do, finding hard stuff to grow stuff, because it's just so fun. Now asparagus, does anybody know about asparagus? How long do they tell you after you plant asparagus, you have to wait before you can eat it? Three years. I want you to notice this apple tree right here at the very back of it, those asparagus ferns. Mm -hmm. And I want you to follow them down to the ground and look at the size of the, the thickness of the, of the stem. Those have been here two years. And you can look, you can look, you can see how thick those stems are. I planted those in April a year ago. And in June, I'm eating asparagus the size of my finger. Not in two years, in two months. And they're totally thriving in full shade of my apple tree. You can see this potato coming up here. That's I already harvested, but it's already coming back. I'm growing potatoes in the root ball of my apple tree, right here. Right in its root ball. And I'm getting amazing, incredible potatoes in its root ball. What kind of potato? This is a red potato. It's, it's harvested because it's early. But what I'm seeing is that I, I planted it back and because it's been warm, it's wanting to grow again. You know, so that'll, that'll die back this winter. It'll come back in the, you know, ne ne next spring. But it's just so amazing how awesome it is. Now, somebody that's over there, someone's, I want you to have an, um, there's an apple on the ground. This is a Gravenstein. And this is the finest summer apple that exists. So if someone can get that, you're going to have a real treat. Just push, go in there and it's, it's right here. It's on the ground, and it's like, yeah, get it. So you can walk through here. Some, some walk through. And just walk through and go, go get it. The Gravenstein has one of the, the nicest features. It has a re, it has a sweet and sour together. And since you went and got it, you can start eating it and talk to us. Ooh. That is heaven. That is, that is sweet. That's the best apple I've had. And are you noticing the tart coming behind it? Yeah. Isn't that awesome? In the same apple, you have both flavors. It's just like, and, and see, I'm, I'm not, this is not something I'm it's programmed. This is just spontaneous. Mm, this is this this it this looks is like you've been really polishing great. the leaves. I know. <laughs> Don't you love it? And these aren't watered. These aren't fertilized. This is just what happens in nature because they're happy. They're getting plenty to eat. But they do get trimmed regularly. Well, the, 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 the bend... You can't prune a bend. You know why they're all bent over? It's the weight of the fruit. He can tell you that's heavy. That apple's heavy. You know why it's heavy? Because it's full of water minerals, which are heavy. And because the fruit is heavy, it bends all the branches down. It's the weight of the fruit that bends them down. You may. 
Now I want I want everybody to come over here and see something really awesome. I want you to notice this one squash plant. This was a seed I planted in the ground in May. And I want you to look at the color of the foliage, the beautiful leaves, the length. You can see it over here growing up in, up, up in my tree at this end. And this is, and you guys with the camera, get in there and take a, get, fo focus on those beautiful squash, the size of them. And you don't have any mil that mildew. <laughs> what kind of squash? This, this, is, this, is, this, is, this is a banana squash. But look at the size of them. And what I'm so enjoying, this is growing in my orchard. Now track with me. <laughs> See, if this, you had a garden and you had this happening, this would be an irritant. It'd take up your whole garden. But see, in an orchard, there's all kinds of space. Let it go. Let it run because it can. There's all kinds of room. And so this, you can see this is taking nothing away from my trees. They're all happy. It's actually growing into the trees and they're having no problem with it. And this is one seed I put in the ground in these wood chips in May. I watered till it came up and all summer long it has received no water and it looks like this. I just gotta tell you, man, yay God. He's just amazing. I, I mean, I, I, you know, farmers who work hard have nothing like this in comparison. <clears throat> Fertilizer will never do this. You know, and you look, look at this new growth coming on these tips. It's acting like, you know, we're not gonna stop. You know, putting on flowers, acting like, you know, it's, it's gonna, it's non-stop. And this is September. You know, we should be slowing down. But it doesn't know any better. <laughs> you look back over there, there's delicata squash. You can see over here, there's another, you see, see a little white squash, that's delicata. They're all over the place. And so I just want you to realize that in a small space, you can grow unlimited food because every square inch is available for you to grow stuff. And their presence is taking nothing away from the trees because there's plenty for everybody. You mentioned a small space. If I may ask you, what do you think is the minimum size to be the person or family, if you know? Well, let me tell you what's happening here. In everything you're going to walk on today and experience is less than one half acre. Less than, less than one, half. one half acre. Less than one half. Thank you. And so what I want you to get and see is that it's not about, you know why we have large farms in the United States? Everybody listen to me. You know why we have large farms in the United States? Is because they're producing so little. They have to be big. You're seeing here, you're seeing everywhere you look, major abundance, mm -hmm. unlimited resource, mm -hmm. because that's how it was made. Mm -hmm. And so the whole concept is not size, it's integrity, quality mm -hmm. of material. Mm -hmm. And so if you have a good vital place, you don't need a lot of room. And so I... I, I People always say, are you going to expand? No, I don't want to because I want people to get that you don't have to have multiple acres. You can have a small space and grow all the... I can't even begin to even use a portion of what I grow here. It's impossible. I have such an abundance. Wow. And you know, you know my challenge is in the summertime? There's times I can't even sample what I'm growing because things are growing too fast. I can't get to it. I love the winter. I can keep up. I got potatoes, beets, and carrots, and so, and it's just I can maintain. But during the summer, it's impossible. I can't even sample stuff because it's just too much. I love that. And see, that's the nature of the Creator. He's generous. He's the I mean, look at look at that tree over there. That poor little thing. You see why the branches are bent over? I'm just telling you, man. And if you look at how I prune my trees, I prune my trees open because I'm trying to reduce the amount of fruit I get. <laughs> I'm making an effort to get less and it's not working. And I, I'm asking, could I get less, please? <laughs> it's just like, it, it's so fun. I'm having all these challenges and their abundance, mm -hmm. not shortage, not like, can I get that to grow? It's trying to stop growth is my challenge, <laughs> not getting it to grow. Like it's just, it's so, it's so huge. Now let me show you why Everything's growing so well here and why I never have to water the trees. How do trees and all plants get life from the soil? What's, what's, the, what's the medium? Roots. roots. Now, you know in school, when you go to school, they tell you the roots of trees go as far as a drip line. Mm -hmm. That's as far as the branches go out. Mm -hmm. That's as far as they go. You know, I think God enjoys, he laughs. Mm -hmm. 
he has a sense of humor. It says in Psalm chapter 2 that he does laugh. I think he gets a kick out of these people trying to create dwarf trees. See, these are all dwarf trees. This is a dwarf tree. You know how they create dwarf trees? You know how they're made? Does anybody know? They find a rootstock of something that does, does not develop a large root system and they graft into it the cultivar you want. And because you have a small root system, that's going to dwarf and keep the tree small. And they tell you with dwarf trees, you've got to stake them because they won't support themselves because there's no roots. You want to, see, want to see something hilarious here? You see this, this plum tree right there? You see these root suckers right here? That's a nine-year-old dwarf plum that has roots coming out 30-foot radius, not diameter, radius. So in your mind, take this and do a circle around that tree this wide and imagine in the ground how many roots are there. And this is why water is not an issue here. When you have a root system that big, they can take up because they're covering such a huge area. And so it's not about the amount of water in the ground, it's the plant's capacity to take up the water that's in the ground. And so you can understand why plants that have small root systems, I don't care how much you're watering, they can't take up because there's no roots. Conversely, when you have this volume of root system, you don't need a lot of water because they can take up. So I've been, I've been lately doing a lot of grafting because I've been motivated by the Holy Spirit to do so because if you pay attention to what's happening on the planet, the, the people who are going to school that are raising your food, farmers, are using more and more pesticides every year. And the bee population on the world is declining at a very scary rate. We're talking scary. Yeah. And what these farmers don't realize is that if you don't have bees, you will not have food. It's not going to happen. And I had the saddest, I have a really good friend I, I met over the inter, on the phone. He saw the film. And we've been in contact now for about four years. And he's like a really good friend because he's just, we, we talk all the time. And he's doing this in his home there. He lives in a suburb of, of, of um, Detroit, Michigan. He says, Paul, he says, I have amazing, beautiful squash and cucumber plants, totally blooming, but I have no, I have no fruit. And I says, Curtis, you have no bees. There's no bees. And so I told him to start building wooden boxes with holes in them to, to invite mason bees because if you don't have bees, you're not going to have food. You can have major good wood chips, good plants, plenty of flowers, but if bees aren't happening, no fruit will develop. This is what his experience has been. It's so sad. So the reason I'm grafting into my trees multiple varieties is that, you see, the fruit trees, apples and pears are cross-pollinated. They require another variety to cross-pollinate to create fruit. And so what I'm getting is that if I have multiple varieties in the same tree, if bees aren't happening, the wind will cross-pollinate because they're so close. So let me show you what happened this, this year that's really getting my attention. I grafted into my pear tree here another variety of pear because I have a really cool variety I want to multiply. And I wish I had, I had just pears here last week. And it, these pears, man, one pear you eat in the morning, you're good all day. It's amazing how, how nutrition, nu nutrient dense they are. Look at that squash. Isn't this awesome? Oh my word. And, and, and look at this thing out here. It's just, it's just like. What do you do with the squash that big? Well, what I'm going to do because this, this is a winter keeper. And so I'm going to wait to get a frost. And when a frost happens, that, that really hardens the skins. And so I'll bring that instead of my porch. I'll give a lot of weight saying I can't eat them all. But this is, this is many, many meals. You, know, you, can, you, you cut sections of this and just, you know, just bake it because it's just... Um, just leave it on your porch? Yeah, it's fine on the porch because it's hardened off. Oh. After a frost, it'll harden that skin and then it'll, it'll soar all winter on my porch. Eat really well. So this is this is amazing food. This is really major longevity. This will feed you like through the winter. And this is why I'm so loving about the creators that if I want you to hear me. This just shows you how, how disconnected we are. You know, our category in nature are mammals. Mm -hmm. All mammals in nature have no refrigerator or stove. No. All mammals in nature go to no store to buy their food. <laughs> are you following me? All mammals in nature are not immunized, they're not vaccinated, they don't, get, they don't get flu shots, and they carry no health insurance to go to doctors. And they live long, healthy lives. Because in nature, everything comes in season and throughout the entire season, now the bear takes a nap in the winter, but most, most of the animals stay, stay awake, 
they're eating all year long really well. Mm -hmm. And they're fully nurtured and have abundance. And we, as intelligent human beings, don't get it. Mm -hmm. We buy food that comes from thousands of miles away, totally dead, mm -hmm. put it in the fridge, let it die more, and then cook it and kill all the enzymes. <laughs> I'm not sure we're that intelligent after all. I'm just telling you, we're under influence. Yeah. We are intelligent, but we've come under wrong influence. Mm -hmm. And we've got to start waking up to the reality that we're being lied to. Mm -hmm. And this influence is not to our best interest. And we've got to come back to the, what's seen in nature and copy it because the reality is all around us. And it's so simple and so easy. I just love eating food in season because it's so good. And it's always, you, see, you know, I always tell you, you know, you, you affluent, Educated people live really boring lives. <laughs> mm -hmm. Really. You go to the store and buy the same dead food every week. Are you hearing me? Mm -hmm. The same stuff year round. Mm -hmm. Same stuff. Yeah. In the spring, I walk over there and my strawberries are like mm -hmm. over the top, like mm -hmm. they're golf ball size and they're full of juice and they're like, ah, oh, what a treat. Mm -hmm. Just as I get used to those, my raspberries come in. It's a whole other realm of delicious. Mm -hmm. Just as I get used to those, then my cherries get ripe then my plums, then my apples, then my pears, then my blackberries. And then next year, it does it again. <laughs> and so all year long, I'm just being overwhelmed with like, wow, ah, mm -hmm. ah, it's so good. And it's always changing. Mm -hmm. It's not boring. And it's ultimate. It's like ultimate way to live. And what's really got my attention is the reality is I never get sick. I have no pain. I have a major my energy and never get tired. Mm. And when I was 40 years old, I had all those things. Mm. And I was sick all the time. Mm. And I'm thinking like, excuse me? I'm 66 and I'm feeling younger than I did when I was 40? <laughs> what I'm getting is that this is the design. What does the word say? As your days, so shall your strength be. The whole concept of getting old and decrepit is unnatural. Mm. It's not by design. It's huge. And what's really getting my attention is that, you know, I, I, I don't walk well with, the, with this cane. I fall a lot. Mm -hmm. And I go down hard like on concrete or blacktop or on, 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 on this, this is okay, but, but I'm on my driveway over there. And I go down hard on my hip and my elbow and my, on my arms. Nothing breaks. And at my age, people who do that stuff breaks. Mm -hmm. And what I'm getting in my spirit, I want you to hear me, that I have a bone structure today far superior to what I had 25 years ago. Because every seven years, yeah. your whole in cell structure is totally renewed. Exactly. And because I'm eating such nutrient-dense food, my bones today have far greater bone density, are far stronger than they were mm -hmm. 25 years ago. Exactly. I love God. He's just awesome. He's just always renewing. He's just totally over-the-top good. And it's just all about connecting to the, the reality. It's just, you are what you eat. Your body can only create cells what you feed it. Mm -hmm. And if you're feeding your, bo your body nutrient, good stuff, it can make good cells. Conversely, if you're feeding your body dead, un unhealthy food, mm -hmm. it can only make cells from what it's building materials it's provided. It's so simple. It's so obvious. It's like, I love it. Yeah. We know that with our cars and with building things, mm -hmm. but we forget it when it comes to our appetite. Isn't it interesting? And, and again, when you think about it as an intelligent human being, you get it and you realize, I'm just under wrong influence. The thought that this doesn't relate to that is stupid. And I know better. But the influence I'm getting are lies. It's just, it's so dramatic how influence is so effective and how it affects us, both positively and negatively, depending on where it comes from. But if you started eating this stuff all the time, you wouldn't want that bad stuff. No, that's, that's, that's the thing I'm finding. I, I had the most interesting experience. Last year, this couple came here in a, in a 1959 um, Airstream trailer. They'd sold their home because they'd frustrated they can't get any good food. The kids had grown up, and they're trying to find some place to live. And so in, they were here like in the summer. So in, 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 um, in January, they called me. So we're living at this trailer park, $400 a month around on the highway, and we're just frustrated. We didn't come talk to you. Says, Let's just talk over the phone. And so I had this little place in, in Squim, a duplex on an acre and a quarter. And I says, listen, you guys just come and live here. Because they want to they do this. I got widgets in place. I got major fruit trees, blueberries. I want you to just come here and live and enjoy all this good food. And so they've been there now for a year. It, this is it's almost a year. It's like back in January. I was just watching her the other day. She says, you know, I was over there mowing the grass. She says, you know, Paul, when I go to the store now, the only thing I buy is toilet paper and cleaning products. I'm looking at all the food I used to buy 
and I can't go there because I have all of this. It just was so, and she's walking out of her house. She just made a, a major breakfast with, with eggs from the chickens, potatoes and onions. She's walking out to the chickens with all this garbage. She says, you know what? This is so convenient. Oh, is this at Goodwill? And I'm looking at this major, beautiful composting bin. And I realized, like, I don't need that. Chickens do it all, you know? And, and, she, and she, they're so blown away at this amazing lifestyle they're living, completely free, unlimited, and so much better than they have when they're paying top dollar. <laughs> and it's so fun to watch people experience goodness because it's just, it's, and you're realizing it's so simple. It's not hard, it's just there for us. Now I want you to know something really cool. Does anybody know about grafting? Grafting is when you take another variety and you plug into a, a variety that's already here. I want you to notice something different, interesting here. You see this black tape right there? I took a piece of wood this size. You see this piece here? This is called cyan wood. And I grafted into my tree last April. Not this April, a year ago April. You see all the pears that are hanging off of this? I came here this April and I stopped counting at 30. There were over 30 pears on this one year's growth. I don't know about you, but I've been around this for 61 years and I've never seen that happen. I took them off because it couldn't hold the weight. I left a few on. I'm saying, God, talk to me. You know what he told me? This is normal. And I says, really? Yeah, this is normal. And then he told me this that really got my attention. He says, the abundance you're experiencing will never end, ever. Because you see, when you connect to who he is, abundance is the normal. That's the reality. It can't change. It's just so huge. And I'm getting like, this is so fun. You know, and you can, you can see these, these pears are, are different than all the rest around. This is Bartlett. This is the variety I've grafted in. You can see, you can see, you can see. But I, I just want you to show, has anybody done any grafting and, and watch how things, you know, you know how the commercial growers, when they produce fruit trees, they get a rootstock and they graft into it a piece of sign wood like this. And they wait two to three years to have a whip. Are you following me? Two to three years to have a whip. Look at this. This was last April. I grafted right here. I want you to look at the size of this wood compared to what it was in April. This is the thickness it was in April. And look at all the shoots coming off of it in one year. I'm just telling you, man, this, look at, look at here. This is another graft right there. See the tape right there? See all those pairs? That's one year's growth. I'm just telling you, man, it's just rocking my boat because this was not what I experienced when I worked hard to fail. <laughs> I'm being real. I'm doing nothing. I just plug stuff in and that happens. But what I'm getting when I have a root system that big, eating that well, this is normal. That's what happens. I just can't help it. Now, how do you harvest pears? I, I've heard kind of different things about, um, I don't know. Yeah. I like to wait for stuff to fall off because then I know it's ripe. Okay. And with the advantage of it falling off here, <laughs> things are close. Things are close to the ground. And they fall on this and not going to bruise. No. And do they store well? Well, this one here is this one here is an amazing variety. It's called Claps Favorite. That's the tree over there. And I want you guys to look at look at look at look at that tree over there where it came from, and focus on the clumps of pears how tight they are together, and remember you're told that if you want large fruit, you thin. Are you hearing me? Check that out. Go look at, look at the volume, how heavy they are on there, and their size. I'm just telling you, man, it's just fun. I know, I'm a part of a fruit club down in go, 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 go walk over there and, 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 and go walk over there and just check that out. Go, go look, you gotta, you gotta see that. It's, just, it's, oh my gosh. it's dramatic. <laughs> Wow. And this is, look at the volume. Look how many are packed in there. And they're not small. They're going to get big. And they're awesome. But that variety is amazing. People keep telling me it's a, it's a, it's a um, Bosque, but it's not. It doesn't keep as well as Bosque. But it is a lot sweeter and a lot juicier. And it's abundant. So if you have pear trees and you want this variety, because I never see it in the store, Get a hold of me, and I'll cut you pieces this 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 um, winter, and you can you can have it. Just graft it, and you got it. it What's it called? Claps, Claps favorite. favorite. Now I want you to come look at this over here. This is what's really arresting my attention this year about growing things under my trees. 
Look at the size of this cabbage. And look where it's growing. I'm loving it. You see over there that asparagus? This, this laying on the outside the, over there. You know how that happened? A seed blew in here from my asparagus. I didn't plant that. You see how thick those, those shoots are coming out of the ground? How big that is in one year? I'm just telling you, man, this did not happen when I was slaving, tilling, and fertilizing. It's just, I'm, see, I'm going to dig that up and go give it away because it's going to be a great asparagus plant for somebody, you know? And see, yes? So we planted some like raspberry bushes and things in the shade of a cherry tree, but it looks like one of them is kind of dying off. Is that because there's, the soil hasn't been prepared long enough with wood chips, or do we need to prune back the cherry? Well, right tree? now they're going into dormancy, and because the plant wasn't really well when you brought it in, it's happening early. That's you know, um, next year you're going to find it's going to get better. Because as this material lays on the ground, it's releasing into the soil, compost tea, and so every year it's an upgrade. And this, you're going to find that it just gets better and better. So, so I'm never concerned about how things are doing. I always just wait because it always gets better. It always improves. And so I see the whole concept of, of trying to deal with disease and treat disease is completely backwards. You want to bring things into good health. That's the ideal. And when something's in good health, disease can't happen. I want to be real with you. When I came here, I had every disease issue in my orchard. I had, I had powdery mildew. I had scab. I had leaf curl. I had earwigs in my apples. Today I have none of it. This is why I'm doing this stuff. Because I want people to get that when you have a healthy environment, disease does not exist. It can't happen there. And again, just look at your body. When you're eating well, properly hydrated, getting plenty of rest, have a good mental attitude, you could be around people who are sneezing and coughing with the flu. It won't touch you because your immune system works quite well. Conversely, if you're run down, you're not eating well, you're dehydrated, you're going to get sick. Mm -hmm. it's, just, it's so basic. And see, these principles I'm seeing are everywhere in nature. They're the same principles. And they relate to everything because that's how it's made. It's very simple. I love sim you know what I love about simple? You can't get lost there. It's a very safe place. I love simple. Now, because this, I want you, I want you to, everybody come over here and experience what's going on here. Because um, we're going to see my soil over here in a, in a little bit. My soil underneath, under here is heavy clay and rock. And I want you to notice what this is like under here. So, so someone will come over here who can dig with their hands and just start digging in that and, ex, and experiencing how soft and nice it is. Oh, it's amazing. And pull it up. And then I want you to, when you get down there, pick up some and smell it. It smells the same as the top. Well, it has, it has an odor. And you know what that odor is? It's the odor of minerals. Oh, right. If you go to farms that raise your organic food and you pick up their soil, there is no odor. You'll smell nothing. This odor is potent because the ground is loaded with minerals. And you look at this beautiful material. Look at that. Right. You just know in your spirit, there's nothing that wouldn't grow in that. Are you hearing me? You just know you could plant anything in that material and it will grow because it can't help it. It's just that nutrient dense. And what I love is that that material is the whole space here. You see, I'm not even beginning to use a partial amount of the potential I have in this space. I could have this happening every square inch because it can. It can support it. Look at that nice romaine lettuce under my tree. Someone should go over there and pull one up and then start breaking off leaves and handing out. Do you have uh, any opinion on whether or not it's helpful to put rock dust or sea minerals in the soil to help remineralize it? If you're in a hurry, yes. But if you're not, Thanks. it's all happening with this. Okay, so this, this is a, um, a, a, a Harleman, is the name of this apple. Passels out, and everybody sa sample this, th this nice romaine lettuce. And you need to know when, when, when you're eating this. This is September after we went through August when it was hot. And romaine lettuce doesn't happen that time of year. Right. It bolts. It's mm -hmm. tough. It's bitter. Mm -hmm. I just want you to notice what you're eating right now in comparison to... Uh, yeah, yeah. Just, just, mm -hmm. just hand that out. Just let we people... Grew lettuce and it was bitter. It yeah, was well, give, give her one right now. So oh, I have a bite. But oh, yeah. No, yeah. Get, start with that stem and just check out... Like mm, Are you getting it? 
I just want you to hear me. I'm not trying to sell you something. Why you, this is the norm. This is what happens in a nutrient-dense environment. Everything tastes good because it can't help it. It can't help it. It's just the result of nutrient density. It just tastes good because it was how it was made. Don't even need salad dressing. <laughs> you know why we use salad dressings and condiments? <laughs> Here's influence. Everybody, everybody hear me. This is, this is a great comment. Everybody track with me. You were created as an intelligent being. You really are. And you were given taste buds for a reason. The reason is that if food doesn't taste good, your brain tells you that's not good and you shouldn't eat it. But you were sent to school and under the influence of the devil, we're taught to use sugar, condiments, and dressings mm -hmm. to take, make nasty dead food taste good <laughs> so you eat it. Mm -hmm. I'm just being real. Mm -hmm. You know better. Your brain tells you when you bite into something bitter like, uh-uh, don't continue doing that. <laughs> Are you hearing me? But then you put dressings and condiments and sugar to change that reality that doesn't change. And you wonder why you're sick and not well and not feeling satisfied? It's so obvious, like, duh, what's up with us? It's so simple. <laughs> when you buy a tree uh, for the plant in your orchard and it's pointing up, how do you go to make it bend over? Do you clip the top or do you bend Here's what you do. If you look at my trees, yeah. you can see there's a, there's a height through all of them. Okay. If you see my hand, you see, I, I was real upfront that I read the Bible and it told me in the beginning of the Bible that God's design for me was to have dominion over this earth right. under His authority. He made us to rule everything He made. And I told these trees, I says, I want you to know I'm in charge here. I'm the boss. And you're here to serve me, not me, you, that. Not, not me, you, you. And as far as I can reach, I'm not using ladders. That's as tall as you're going to get. And you see, as a tree goes up and you get a height you want, you find a lateral branch that's going out from that and you cut to that. And then you can see how everything goes out. As they go out and continue to go out and the, and the fruit happens, the weight happens and it pulls them down because gravity works. Now if you notice this environment, it looks kind of funny, but I can reach everything. Any child can walk in here and reach everything and never use a ladder. That's convenient. And I really like the idea of convenience. Convenience just really fits with me. It's just nice. I like it. Is there a reason you don't trim your cherry tree like yes, that? Yes, because cherry trees, there's no such thing as a dwarf. And if they sell you one, they're lying to you. You see that tree's only 20 years old. These big ones over here are 37 years old. You see the size difference? Mm -hmm. so, so cherries, you don't plant in an orchard with apple trees. Put them somewhere else so they can get big. But you know my challenges here? I had a gorgeous 17-year-old cherry tree that I made firewood out of because it was 40 feet tall and I couldn't reach the cherries anymore. And so I'm, I'm having to plant trees young again because they grow too fast. See again, this, 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 this concept of abundance is, is frightening and it's, it's very challenging to keep up because it's just, things grow too quick. Do you put a head over your cherry tree or anything? No. Let the, let the because there's plenty for all of us. Okay. You see, you see here, there's no shortage. Now, for someone who wants to have a real treat, this apple here, see there's one right there in, the, in that lettuce? Someone grab that, it's fallen. This apple tree here came from Japan. You can have it, eat it. <laughs> smell it, smell it first, smell it first, run it by your nose. Mm, it's fragrant. It's major aromatic. Yeah, go ahead and oh, pick one. Sure. No, take, take, take one, yeah, eat it. Uh, I want you, so I want you to, to experience the good flavor. See, these are starting to get ripe. Mm. How's that go again? Are, are, you, are you hearing the sound effects? I'm, I'm not prompting this. I'm just, this is just the normal response when you connect to something good. Mm, it's so sweet. Well, it is. Isn't that good? Right. And, and again, look at the water content. See how much right. water is there. And these are trees that have never been watered, ever. It's all of, this is a Kani, A-K-A-N-E. You could take one of these apples and put it in your house 
and your whole house will fill with the aroma. It's just uh, the most how, aromatic apple I've ever seen. How, how do you get a start of one? I mean, how, what is that the right there? You, uh, you, I can cut that off for you in the fall. Yeah. Give it to you. You can graft it, and you have it. Okay. Would grow with gravestein, which, which which you would probably want to graft to, or something. Big not not like gravestein because gravestein. You never want to have gravestein on anything but gravestein because gravestein is so vigorous. The part you put in will be like a dwarf compared to everything else. So graft to something else. The gravestein is just like over the top okay. as far as its vigor. Okay. So but graft in something else, you'll be okay. Well, what's your favorite apple? Oh, people ask me all the time is that at every time one gets ripe, <laughs> I get a new favorite. Right. <laughs> I'm just telling you, man, they're all unique. Mm -hmm. Everyone's, and it was so, I so love about this because see, when I used to go to the store and buy apples, they all taste the same bland nothing. Yes, and you can't tell. And here, every, I mean, I mean, every one is just like, wow, ah, because it's so different. And, and all season long, it just keeps changing. I'll never forget my, my son Aaron, these mutsus over here. This is a, a Japanese mutsu and it's very late. We've been, eating, we've been eating apples all summer, man, just all we can. And we we're picking these up and he bites into one of these. His eyes got really, Dad, can you believe the flavor? I look at him and says, it's awesome. But I realize... Aaron, we've been eating good apples all, all, all fall. This is just another realm of good. It's just like, ah. And this is so in line with this amazing creator. He's just really good. And he expresses his goodness in all this stuff he makes because that's just who he is. And they're all unique and different because he's not boring. He's very creative. And it's just, it's so good. Yes. In the spring, you transplanted a lot of things here. Is this the result of what you did in June, I believe it was? No, the, the, the um, lettuce? Mm -hmm. No, you this, a lot of no, this lettuce, I'll tell you, I'll tell, let me tell you about, uh, I want you to, this, I'm, this question is so cool. You see that, that red cabbage that's out there, that's, you pass by? Mm -hmm. This red cabbage came from the same row. I just thinned them. And so what I'm getting is that, is this is what's so awesome about connecting to the creators. See, every, in agriculture, people do multiple plantings to have successive, you know, harvest. But by transplanting from the same row, when you move it, it's stressed out and it, and it steps back and it takes time to come back. And so you just extended from the same planting, the same seeds, two different harvests. And something, something I'm getting now, where'd you get that one? It fell. But where? This tree? Uh, it fell right back here. Okay. That one over there will come to is another Japanese variety that's awesome. We don't need to get some of those. But um, what, what, what God's showing me is so awesome. You see, these here are far bigger and nicer than the ones I originally planted out there. And you know what I'm going to collect seed? From these, and here's why. Because they overcame their transplant shock, they're a lot stronger and more potent and more powerful because they had resistance and they overcame it. And by doing that, they became empowered. I'm just telling you, man, I'm so loving these things that to the natural mind, say, oh, look, your plant's all stressed out. No, it's going to come back. And when it does, it's going to be way better because of the overpowering resistance it had to overcome. And, and I'm so getting these amazing revelations you'll never get in books if you go to school. This is, what, this is why God put us in the garden up front, is to know Him and connect to His reality. It's just powerful. It's, and I'm so loving these amazing things I'm learning because it's just so incredible awesome and such incredible wisdom that you never get you know, out of a book. So if we were to collect our own seed rather than keep buying new seeds, you think we'd get better varieties that are more suited to our well, uh, Yeah, and a lot stronger. I'm, I'm so glad you your question. I bought last year, I collected my, my, my um, cucumber seeds. And what amazing when I collected my seed, I, I wait for a cucumber to get really big and yellow so it's fully mature. So I open it up, scrape the seeds out into a, a strainer and wash all the, all the goop off. When I'm done, I got over a hundred seeds in there. And I'm thinking like, and they charged me three bucks for 15. <laughs> but what really got my attention this year, and I love the creator because I know he's getting my attention, is I'm buying from really good companies who have good heirloom seeds. So I bought this package of cucumber seeds and I planted a row of mine. My seeds, every one came up. In the row that I bought, three came up. And God got my attention. He says, they may be heirloom, but they're not growing in the environment yours are and they don't have the vitality. Even though they're heirloom, they're growing in tilled, depleted, chemically fed soil. And they don't have, and so what I'm getting, and here's, and here's you know, in, in Genesis, God repeats himself. And when he repeats himself, he kind of senses it's important. When he talks about our diet, he gave us our diet. 
Genesis 129, and God said, Vegetables, fruits, and their seeds are what I've given to you for food. And he makes an interesting statement he says twice. The food that I've given to you produces seed after its own kind. And he repeats himself. Now you track with me. See what I'm saying here? <laughs> all hybrid seeds and all genetically modified seeds do not bear seed after their own kind. They're altered and they will not produce the same. And what I'm so getting in the spirit is to see God is all about free and setting free. It was for liberty Christ came to set us free and everything he's made for us, all our food with semi-diligence, you collect your seed, you will have free food for the rest of your life, unlimited, because that's how he made it. Conversely, if you buy into the system and you buy their seeds, you have to buy their seeds every year because your seed is not productive. It will not produce the same. It does not bear seed after some kind. It's just, again, when you connect the dots, it's huge. It's dramatic. And you can just see the whole point of it. They can control who will live or die by the system because they control the seed. Remember that when you vote. They control, they control the seed. And so what I'm getting at in these times we're living, which is the end and everything that can be shaken is being shaken, that when you connect to this, I'm totally separated from that system. I don't care what they do because God brings the sun and the rain. My plants grow quite well. They produce seed. And that whole system can totally shut down and fail and I'm not going to be affected at all because I'm not connected to it. Because my dad is good. He's generous. He brings the sun and the rain for all of us. My, tree, my plants produce awesome seed and I have nothing to do with him. And for the rest of my life, I'll have abundance with absolutely no impact because that's how I made it. So you're here today, not by accident. This is a divine appointment. God wants to get your attention that you can be good for life, having no fear because he's made provision for you because he's a good dad. And he's not challenged by all the things that's happening on the earth. There's no challenge because he's above it all. And he wants us to connect because we're his kids. We're in his line and we're connected to him that we can experience his, his same goodness because he's above it all. And he's just good. So bearing seeds after its own kind, how does that connect to like apples where if you plant an apple seed, you're not necessarily you. going to get an apple that tastes the same. Thank you. It won't be the same apple. You know why? Because apples are cross-pollinated. That's why with things like corn and stuff that you have to plant one variety because if you plant multiple varieties, they'll cross-pollinate and not be the same apple. After one kind. So thank you. It was a very, very good question. You want to only collect seed. If you grow, want to grow corn seed, only grow one variety of corn so you maintain the same variety. And like, you know, not, not, not seed, like lettuce does not cross pollinate. It's the same. You know, so some things don't cross pollinate, but when they do, you want to be careful about collecting your seed. This is why if you plant an apple seed, it's different than the, than the apple because it was cross pollinated. Another variety cross pollinated. So the seed is different. And this is why the only way you maintain the same variety is to use cyan wood from the tree and graft into another because that maintains the same. Otherwise, it's not the same. That's why they always keep coming up with new varieties. They're planting seeds and some are good. Some are, oh, that's a great one. Well, that's just a new variety you know, because someone you know, planted a new seed and it's just different, which is very creative, very cool. You know? and, but uh, to maintain the same, though, you've got to really be careful about cross-pollination. So Thank. speaking of seeds, um, so like bananas and grapes and seedless watermelon, are those healthy no, for us. I don't think so. Because, again, seed. Let's talk about seeds. Anybody plant celery seed? Any gardeners? We're talking like dust. I mean, they're like, you know, celery seed is bigger, way bigger. Than, I mean, they're tiny. Now, the reason I use that example is track with me. In that seed, in that tiny, almost like dust-sized seed, is enough life force to create a stem and two leaves before there's any roots to take up nutrients from the ground. Mm -hmm. Track with me, that power, that life force is all compacted in that tiny seed. Seeds are the most compacted, dense food that exist. Nothing is more potent in food value than seeds. It's huge, it's amazing. So you can eat a lot of seeds. You know, eat your sprouts. Sprout, seeds, and sprouts are really, see, and people don't have yards. Sprouts are really an awesome, awesome alternative, you know. And, and, and again, you know, I'm, I'm eating my apple cores because of the seeds. See, I was told not to eat apple cores. My, my dog eats the apple cores. And, and my, my neighbor down the road got prostate cancer. He was in Vietnam like I was, and he got affected by Agent Orange. And he's starting to read and how you counteract, and he's finding that in the apple core is a major substance that offsets cancer. And, oh, laetril. Laetril, yeah. You know, and, and, so, and so what's awesome, 
And as soon as he said that, I'm watching my dogs, my dog eat the apple core. What's up with us? And we're, we're taking the finest part of the apple and throwing it away. Again, influence. I keep coming back to this influence we're getting that's totally ripping us off big time. It's huge because nothing in nature throws away an apple core. It's so profound when you start connecting the dots and realize that all this stuff we're doing, thinking that we're smarter and better and no more, is totally counterproductive. This way. So over here we have an example of dense planting, <laughs> which I love doing because I like to show you just how um, you can see over here all this kale in my tree. If you look over there, look at that beautiful parsley. Has anybody oh. grown parsley that dark green, that awesome? Gorgeous. You look at all this kale here. You look at all the potatoes under my trees over there that in September are still blooming. I can't even harvest yet. Is anybody packing a knife? Yeah. Yes, there is. Okay. <laughs> I, want, I want that knife, knife packer to give me a hand. <laughs> I want you to take this zucchini and just slice up pieces and hand out. This is a raw zucchini that we're not cooking. And I want you to notice how good it is. Oh, you'll, you'll, you'll be good. Yeah, just, just cut slices and hang out and hand out. And as people eat them, talk to us. Everybody, because we got, we got plenty here. No, no, again, I just want you to notice the, the color and size of these zucchini plants growing in my orchard that have, have not been watered all summer. Oh, well, thank you. Is anybody yeah. growing zucchini? Yeah. Does this look pretty good? Oh, yeah. Better than mine. Yeah. I'm curious, do you harvest it before it gets too big? No, because you'll see when we get to the chicken pen, the ground is covered with huge zucchinis that I feed to my chickens. So, it's, it's, again, it's, when I have time to come out here and harvest, I do. And when I don't, they just get big and they become chicken food. Now, See, the advantage of having chickens is that nothing goes to waste here. I love my chickens. They just they create all the soil in my garden, and then they produce give me eggs as a as a bonus. But they 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 are amazing at nothing goes to waste. And see, I don't have to buy chicken food. I just grow it all. They're, they're now, incredible. Is that, is that damage there? Is that uh, squash bugs? That's de that's dehydration. For whatever reason, it just got it got didn't get enough water. But if you can see, the new growth coming on when, are, is getting quite nice. Mm -hmm. And so, I'm never bothered by any bug damage mm -hmm. because I know my plants are well and they're overcome. So I could care less what caused that, because it's not an issue. Because if you look again, you look at the new growth, it's saying we won. You're not going to get us. And so the whole concept of trying to identify and deal with bugs is backwards. Well, they when they show up, they're just telling you your plant's not well. Yeah, because they killed one of my plants, and then I, so I wet them down, and as they rose, then I Who's sprayed the them. Where's the, where's the knife guy? Where's the knife guy? Okay, here, I got another one for you to cut up. Hey, Paul, we get the mold on our squash plants. Mold is, mildew. A, mildew. 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 mildew and mold is about not enough in the air, air circulation and too much dampness. Too much dampness. Damp, you know, mold cannot grow in a in a bright, light, aerated place. It grows in a shaded, lack of oxygen type place. So open stuff up. If you got mold stuff, just op open, get, get stuff opened up so it gets light and air. Okay. So you know, see, you, you know, I love the Japanese, the way they define pruning. You want to prune a tree so a, a bird can fly through it. And the mentality is a tree's gonna grow back in. It's gonna fill, so give it room, give it space to fill. You know how they describe pruning an apple tree? Prune an apple so you can throw a cat through it. And when you throw a cat, they don't ball up, they spread out. But I'm, but I'm looking at what's happening here, all the growth that's going on. I'm so glad I, I get it because if I didn't open these up, they'd be so dense. And when they get dense, then I get powdery mildew and all these disease issues because they're not having light and air exposure. So pruning stuff open is really beneficial. It's really good. And again, if you look, nothing in nature does well compacted. Nothing, everything needs airspace and light, you know? And so things that are jammed together, don't do well because it's just not by design. So if we want to grow underneath our fruit trees to maximize space, is there a way you'd recommend to prune or just prune it normally? Well, for air? look at the lettuce here yeah. under my tree. 
Is there any significant way I prune that tree? Probably not. Not, not probably, really. It's pretty full. The tree's quite full. Does that lettuce look like it's having mildew issues and not doing well? Probably in the shade a lot of the time, isn't it? It likes the shade because in the summer, it wouldn't do well. And so the shade is an asset. It's a blessing. It's like, I couldn't do that out in the open, open, open um, sun. And so what I'm getting is that all these things God made when you connect, He starts showing you, this is an asset. This is a blessing. This is a total, gives you something you can't have. And so what I'm getting is that every square inch in your place is accessible and usable for ultimate production. You just not connect with the Creator as to when and how to use it. I'm just, it's just, it's so awesome. I'm just, I'm so loving it because I was, t I'm telling everybody, plant fruit trees in your garden. Really, you're not going to take anything away from it. It's an asset. And so you were thought you have to have an orchard and a garden separate. What you're seeing today, that's not real. It's not real at all. And so are you starting to notice that you are requiring less and less space, less and less area to maintain with higher and higher return? Yay, God. I'm just telling you, man, it's awesome. It's like he's so good. And you can just get how this influence has made life so hard for us and difficult because it's not reality, it's not truth. How old are those trees? That tree there is just a baby, it's like the second year. Oh. And you can see how the branches are already bent over yeah. because the apples are heavy. I'm not, you can't prune bends. It's just, it's just like amazing, you know, how incredible it is. Just, does that apple look good to you? Go pick the one in the center and bring it back to me. I'm going to show you something awesome about... This one? Yeah. Oh, the one in the center, right on the top. There you go. Now bring it here. I'm going to show you something really cool. You know how, you know how the producers wax trees in the, in, 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 in the apples? Watch this. This is, this, is, this is so cool, man. This God is just so amazing. Good reactions. Look, look, look at that. Look at that. Look at that. No wax on I'm just telling, man, look at that. Yep. Is that awesome? You can eat that. It's good. Thank you. I'm just telling you at all levels, God is the ultimate. It just doesn't get higher. It doesn't get better. Isn't that good? Thank Now, for someone who, who, who doesn't like apples, anybody who doesn't like apples, she doesn't like apples. <laughs> I'm starting to love apples. You know why actually. you don't like apples? Because they were bland. Because you're intelligent. Yeah. And your taste buds says they're not good. Mm -hmm. You just didn't have anything good. Yeah. God didn't make it bad. Someone messed with it. Mm -hmm. So if someone doesn't really care for apples, you need to get one of these. Because this one here, I can't even pronounce the name. It's from Japan. T-S-U-G-U-R-A. But it's exquisite. It's awesome. T S U G U R A. I guess we don't like apples. <laughs> well, you do when they're good. Because listen, the Creator didn't make things bad. He, that's, just, that's not who He is. He's good. And so, when something's not good, it's been changed. It's not not by design. That purple apple there is Spartan from England. It's not ripe yet. When it gets ripe, that one there has the most amazing shine on it, and it's really good, but it's not ripe yet. But that's Spartan. You know, how, do you, how do you order your apples? How do I order them? Yeah. No, I, I go to nurseries and buy them, and I buy them from people who raise them in a nasty environment with chemicals and garbage. And I'm not bothered by that because when they come here, they repent. And they're good. So, so don't be concerned of, the, of that organic growing. It doesn't matter. When they come to your place, it's going to change. You just go to the nursery. So, and, and here's when you buy trees. Everybody hear me? You want to buy apple trees only in February when they first show up in the nursery as bare root. Don't ever buy a tree in a container. Ever. Ever. I'll tell you why. In a container, the roots are contained. And they've trained... They're trained because they come to an outside edge to go around themselves. Are you hearing me? They're trained to go around themselves. When you plant that in your, in your garden, they're going to go around themselves and girdle and choke themselves and they won't last. Really. So when you buy them bare root, 
They were growing on the ground, they were pulled up, and that's when they get them. So in February when they show up, that's when you, that's, that's when you get them. Now, if someone have an apple core, this dog will show you how, how, how much she enjoys live food. She'll eat it. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody wants to share. <laughs> but anyway, my, my dog, you see how nice she looks? Mm -hmm. This dog is a vegan, and she's nothing but live food in my garden. What is her name? Her name is Tirsa. Tirsa in, in Hebrew means delight, and she's a sweet delight. She's an awesome dog. But she eats nothing but live food that I grow here. Do and you give her eggs? I give her eggs, but that grows here. And she's a vegetarian. And she's vegan because I don't give her any meat. She's a vegan, yeah. No, vegan is... Oh, no, no eggs, okay. Yeah, she's vegetarian. She, thank you. But she's quite well. And you know what's so cool about my dog? You see, most dogs have to wait to be fed their dead dog food by their owners. This dog never waits. She's, whenever she's hungry, she just walks over here, picks stuff, and helps herself. And all day long, is just whenever she's hungry, she just eats. Does she like apples? Yeah, she loves apples. Here's a, here's a. Yeah. I won't share it all. <laughs> yeah, this, you know, again, I eat apples. They're good. Why would my dog not? It's just, it's not there's nothing wrong with the apple. You know, the, the think that you have to feed dogs dog food <laughs> indicates you have no historic background. For the last 6,000 years, there was no dog food. Dog food didn't exist. And dogs ate what people ate. And, and the Bible, Bible brings that reality to, to light. Remember Jesus is on vacation. He's taking his disciples on because he's had a you know, a, a very stressful time. He wants a break. So he goes to Syrophoenicia and this woman shows up to him with a daughter who's got a demon. And Jesus says, you know what? I can't deal with that. I, I was sent to the lost tribe of Israel and that's where my ministry is. And I love her response. You see, the, the Jews refer to the Samaritans as dogs because they're half-breeds. And here's what she says. But Jesus, the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from the table. Right. And Jesus saw her faith to believe. That, that he's good and he healed her daughter. But the reality back then for the last 6,000 years is dogs ate from what came off the table. Mm -hmm. That's how they ate. There was no dog food. You know, and it's so bizarre how you think you got to feed your dogs dog food. If you're looking around you today, how dogs that are fed dog food look, mm -hmm. they're obese and they have tumors. Mm -hmm. They look like us because mm -hmm. they're eating the same garbage we are. Mm -hmm. I'm just being real. If you pay attention, the evidence is not hidden. It's pretty obvious. Yeah, the same issues we are because they're eating the same food. It's just, it's so across the board obvious. Did you thank that person for the apple? <laughs> We're coming up to the garden here and I want you all to sample this arugula. It's going to seed. Next week it's going to be chicken food. But today you can sample, just pick some of the nice um, dark green leaves in the center. And I want you to notice the incredible um, integrity and flavor of that arugula. Now arugula, if you haven't had it before, is spicy. It's not bitter. It's peppery. But snap off a leaf like, like something like this, just a nice leaf and eat that and just and just talk to them about the flavor. Are you are you are you are you wow. getting the integrity? and potency yeah. and yet, and you know it's, it's 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 spicy that's how it is but it's not bitter it's it's delicious now while you're here so you want to sample some of the cilantro Pick. now here let me show you something really cool here about cilantro. you know see cilantro this is going to seed now you all know that when something goes to seed it's tough and stringy I want you to start there and eat way back and talk to me about the flavor of that of that of that, of that of that stem, the stem. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Juicy and mm -hmm. crunchy. Is it sweet? It's very flavorful and some sweetness to it. Yeah. yeah. And this and this is going to seed. And you heard her comments. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Pick the and I, I want you to notice the aroma in the air. Are you smelling the cilantro? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Everybody, hear me. This is powerful. This is a scientific fact. In ten minutes, not ten hours. In 10 minutes after fruits and vegetables are picked, they can lose up to 80% of the metal properties in 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. So when you go to the store today, your whole food stores and all these great people that sell organic stuff, and you buy cilantro, mm -hmm. there is no odor. Mm, that's true. Something is lost. Something is not there. Mm -hmm. Are you getting it? You can smell that 
coming off of this because it's live. Mm -hmm. For you men who use, you know, power tools, grinders, when you pull the plug, uh, anything disconnected from life dies. It's just so, it's so, con it's so simple. And see, so this is why you were created to eat food fresh in season. If you notice in the beginning, the Creator did not issue his first children a stove and refrigerator. <laughs> You're laughing, but it's not funny. Wow. We were never created to take live food, put it in the refrigerator and let it die, mm -hmm. and then cook and kill the enzymes. Mm -hmm. Sample some of that spinach behind you right there. Pick some of those nice bigger leaves over here and check out the flavor. Is this something different? It smells different. Wow. That, that, that is, but that's amazing. I'm glad you noticed it. This is the most... No. Looks like mint. No, this this is um lamb's quarters. I wish it was, but it's not. This is this is a um um lemon ball. Yeah, you got it. Thank you. It's it's it's, it's okay. Yeah, have some have some of the cilantro. It's really good. Uh, winter crop I can't taste last that. No, this this is going to go to the chickens next week. Cuz but but down down the road down over there, you're going to see a whole other row this is coming up. It's going to feed me through the winter. And I got and I have cilantro down there. You see what I what down here is is my winter garden. And what's so cool about the stuff I just planted now is that it's going to get cold and it won't bolt. It won't grow much through the winter, but it's going to get full size and I'll have access to it all winter because the cold won't hurt it because it's cold it's not going to bolt so i have live awesome greens all winter and it's all about the importance of planting at the right time so my last planting here is at the end of august first of september and those things i plant then will feed me all winter because they won't go to seed so it's this is the beauty of this now, now if you notice what's happening here in my garden now for you gardeners just track with what's going on here in your rototill garden what is happening with everybody walking in your garden, don't move, is not something you'd tolerate. And I want you to notice that you're having absolutely no impact on my garden. Are you seeing that? You're not compacting the soil. You're all walking on this and nothing's changing. I just want you to get, I want you to connect these amazing realities of this amazing, and you see this beautiful stuff he's moving with his foot there? You, you dig down, dig down and dig up. Yeah, I was dig, gonna say, how deep is that? Dig it. Go for it. So is this for wood chips have broken? No, this is all is chicken? Chicken. the result, not chicken manure, yard waste processed by my chickens. Okay. Look at that amazing material. Look where what it's growing. Come from? Huh? I wonder where that root came from. From my trees over here. Oh. Apple Ooh, trees. Damn. Yeah, apple so trees. you don't need wood chips on this because you have... Well, that. here's what God brought to my attention. You see, I'm not walking well. He didn't cause this, and I was healed with the cross. And I think it's going to come someday. But in the meantime, he's working all things together for good. And he showed me something a few years ago. You may not be walking well enough to bring wood chips to your garden. And I want you to know that everything you need is right here. And so see, you see over at your chicken pen? For the rest of your life, all you'll ever need for your garden is a wheelbarrow, a shovel, and a screen. And you're covered forever and when things shut down there's no gas you can't use the truck to have wood chips you're totally good and so he used my disability to bring to my attention this amazing resource I had that I didn't know about I just love him he's just the ultimate he's just totally like the best because he's so good look behind you at those cabbage the size of those now let's walk out here to the front and then I want I want you to um or, or, or you can just walk alongside here and snap off some of that broccoli and go down to the, where the next piece of growth is coming from and you look at the stem, you're going to realize this is going to be tough. And I want you to start the stem and see how tender. And I want you to get this broccoli was planted in April. So this has been here all summer long and I want you to sample that and see how tender and delicious it is. Go over there and just start breaking stuff off and eating it. Everybody. It's the stem. Start at the stem. And that, that big piece there in the center with that thick stem, that's going to be really tender and good. Mm. 
What's your response? Wow. Tender and delicious. Now, now, everybody track with me. Would you cook that? No. no. You would? You don't need to. The stem? Yeah. yeah, I would. I would just eat it. But you wouldn't need to. The reason you the reason you cook food is because it's tough. That's true. And you're trying to make it soft. This is not tough. It's totally fine. Isn't that good? You, you look 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 at the size of that stem she's eating from. That's good. Chickens affectionately. Do you have any opinions about goats? I do. Goats jump fences. Yes. You have to have very high fences to contain goats. Thank you. And that would be labor intensive for me. And so I don't have goats. But I like goats. They're, they're nice. It's just that. Yeah, they're, they're, they're awesome. It's just that they don't, um, they won't stay contained. They will. But you know what works better than a goat? If you have, if you've got ground that's really difficult to clear, you know what's the most amazing animal for clearing ground for a garden? Kids. Pig. A pig will uproot everything. They will go down deep and get every single root out. There is nothing more amazing for clearing space. And in China, they, they found my film and there's these, these home church groups are going around to places and they're bringing in pigs and clearing amazing areas of brush and stuff, putting down wood chips and having amazing gardens. It's just powerful. I'm just so blown away at what God's doing with this. My wife, my wife is my wife is a midwife, and she's world known. And she got a, a, a email from a woman um, in Netherlands, who's talking to her about midwifery issues. But she just wanted to post a picture of her whole yard covered in wood chips. These are the most amazing grapes and incredible stuff. And what just really blesses my spirit: this is happening all over the world, mm -hmm. because it works. Mm -hmm. It can't fail, mm -hmm. and it's the most it's the most natural, obvious way to grow stuff. It's just amazing. Now, does anybody grow um, a, um, parsley? Italian parsley? Anybody? Try to. I try to. <laughs> What's this look like compared to what you've grown? The About size. About times as big. Now I want you to, everybody to sample a leaf and get impacted by the amazing nutrient density. It is powerful. It's potent. Mm. Mm. Very good. You see how potent? an explosion. It's awesome. And, and see your taste buds are not lying to you. They're telling you this is nutrient density. This is what it tastes like. It's powerful food. It's amazing. It's lemony. It's good. It's supposed to be. You know, and what gets my attention is just the size. I've never seen Italian parsley this big anywhere in any organic farm. I don't care what they're using. Yeah. Now, where's my knife friend? Right here. Can you help me? Could you pull that beat right there? This one? Yeah. And and wipe off wipe off in the ground the, the um on the ground the um the dirt. And then with your knife just use as a cutting board, cut slices and hand that out. You wanna see what I've got? You, you, you first. No tears in zucchini. He pulls them out with his uh, teeth, huh? Yeah, just cut off just, just cut off that, that root in the top and then make slices and, and hand out. First of all, turn that around and show people the color. Wow, that's beautiful. Is that awesome? Not only is it delicious, but it's aesthetically pleasing. That is beautiful. Now, 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 now you eat that and, t and talk to me about the flavor of that beet, raw beet. Is that sweet? No, the grains are edible too. Everything's edible. Would you like some grains? <coughs> Does anybody like carrots? Yes. You can start right there and pull them as you work your way back. And I want you to notice, people who grow carrots, I want you to notice the density of my carrots. You see, I'm not thinning. You know why I don't thin? Because the ground's soft and they move out of each other's way. You see those carrots coming out? They look quite, 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 quite well. Now, now the carrots, run it by your nose, same thing. Check out the check out the flavor the, the, the aroma from the carrot. <laughs> Just wipe it off in the grass. The, the carrot. Tastes good raw. Yeah. Isn't that good? Yeah, but I have. Now now listen the tops don't throw in the ground. Just throw over the fence for the sheep because if you notice where you when you came here, that my lawn is really clean, and that's intentional. 
I don't like clutter, and so don't please don't throw anything on the ground. Just we'll take it all and throw over the fence for the sheep. They'll eat it. Yeah. Anybody? Anybody getting any of this beet? Yeah, just beet. Anybody? How, how's the flavor of that beet? Oh, it's sweet. Are you starting to notice that word? Yes. Seems to be pretty prolific here. Here's about thinning carrots. Everybody hear me. Everybody hear me. This is the insanitive influence. You paid top dollar for those seeds. You're hearing me. And you're going out in your garden and taking your money and throwing it away. Thinning. Excuse me. You see, in this environment, because the ground's soft, as they grow, you see the size of that carrot? It's not little. Oh my goodness. <laughs> As they grow, they push themselves out of each other's way because the ground is soft and they can move. And so you can see how thick these are planted. And you want a few gardeners, everybody track with me. You know when I planted these? The first week in July. You say the first week of July? First week of July is when I planted that carrot tree. I can't believe it. I'm not lying to you. I mean, I do believe it, but I'm just, that was a figure of speech. But I'm just telling you, that was not my experience when I'm telling. I am, I'm totally blown away at how fast things are growing. You see, I have to keep changing my dates of planting. I used to plant my fall crops in June. Now I have to do it in July because they get too big. It's hilarious. It's just like, <laughs> wow, amazing. Now you see over here, this is my fall planting. So I got spinach. Look at that beautiful cilantro. Look at how nice that cilantro is, and that's not going to bolt. So I got romaine lettuce. Then I have um, over here, look at that arugula. Look how nice that arugula is. And see, that's not going to bolt because it's going to get cold. And so I have all these amazing, nice greens during the winter when most people don't because, because their, their, their garden is funky and it's hard to break up the ground. They're not planting you know, in, in, in September because it's, it's, it's a mess. But here it's totally accessible and you can plant. So, when, so, sorry, when do you harvest these? All, all winter long, I'm eating it. Every day, live food. Dog's trying to get my carrots. Yeah, your carrot. She'll eat the carrot. I said, you get your own. I seen you on TV. Yeah, pull your she own. pulls her own. But she, you know, she, she's 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 an opportunist. If it's, if it's convenient, she'll get it. Oh, no, don't you beg. Look, look at her. She knew I had a carrot. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Look, she's eating it. <laughs> How often will you run your rake through there to? Yeah, I'll, to get my weeds out, I'll just yeah. bring the rake in and just, you know, surface them. Every couple weeks but let me tell you something I learned about about those weeds. Again, I'm so connecting now to the genius of the Creator. You see, I had a lot of help here in August. And so I decided to go to my chicken pen and, and move myself out into my orchard. I've never done it before. I always do it in the fall, winter when God does. You know what happened here? You look at the density of weeds that's going on there. You see, what I discovered is that it hadn't rained yet. And usually when it rains in my orchard, in my, in my, in my chicken pen, that happens and the chickens eat all those weeds. And because I brought it in early before they sprouted, when I watered, all these weeds came up. And it was such an amazing <coughs> lesson to tell me there's a reason for the seasons. And I'm going to never, ever do that again. I'm going to wait till late fall, winter and let the chickens eat all those and let those seeds sprout in the chicken pen and bring... Because I've never had this happen before. It's, it's, it's like a... But I'm so getting at the importance of the seasons. And when you don't abide by that, you have issues. You know, it's, I mean, they, they pull these and they're good, 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 you know, food for my chickens. But, man, it was a lot of work, you know. But it's just... I'm, it's, it's, I'm, I'm always learning. I'm finding in this gardening process is that it never ends, the knowledge and understanding and revelation you get because God's infinite and He's always showing you new things because that's just, He's all about new things because so, He's just so good. So does anybody here think they have difficult soil to work with? Like, you know, clay, hard pan, rocky soil? We have clay. Super sandy? Okay, I want, I want you to walk over here side of my house because I want you to experience my soil and it will give you a real encouragement because you will you will know you have nothing as bad as this how many inches of precip do you get here per year excuse you know? me how many inches of precip 14 to 18 inches <laughs> wow that's nothing like San Francisco yeah it's not a lot 
we live in the rain shadow of the Olympics, mm -hmm. where the, the the rain dropped 14 feet in the rainforest, and when it comes across swim, there's nothing in it. Now on the way to Seattle, it picks up water. But this is a rain shadow here, and it just doesn't rain much. Pleasant to live in, but a challenge if you want to grow stuff. But what's so cool is that orchard, this herb garden over here, have never experienced any water, ever. I, I just love it, man. It's awesome. You're so welcome. I'm so thankful you can be here. If you uh, you don't want to buy anything and swim mm -hmm. or Jefferson or Clellan County because the Indians have taken control of the water, yeah. and if you buy and swim now or that area Jefferson or Clellan County, when you drill a well at your own expense, you have to pay a, the county a thousand dollars to use it in your house. Yeah. In your house, if you want to use it in your yard, and you're limited another thousand. So you don't want to buy in Clellan County, mm -hmm. Jefferson County where I live. 10% of the property is privately owned. 10%. Mm -hmm. There's very little, very little government. And um, I got 20 gallons a minute. I can use all I want in my well. You know, no one's going to restrict it for me. Mm -hmm. You're not really in No, I'm in Jefferson County. I'm right on the edge. Mm -hmm. We're talking like the signs right out there on, on the highway. Mm -hmm. and I'm like 3,000 feet into Jefferson County. Mm -hmm. Is anybody interested in pruning? Pruning is an art form. And I think there's only one culture in the world that knows how to do it right. Japan? Japanese. And the reason they do it right is they do it different than everybody else. Every other culture, you've seen it. When you see pruning, prune from the outside in. They take loppers and stuff and start hacking the ends off. You look at all these ugly stumps in your face and it's gross looking. The Japanese, in, in contrast, they start from the inside and work their way out. And when you do that, when you have crossovers and density and stuff that doesn't fit, when you clean all that out, then everything else makes sense how it fits. Are you following me? So I want you to come over here and view one of the most beautiful examples of pruning I have in my yard. And I want you, to, when you look at it, notice you can see absolutely no evidence has ever been pruned. There's no cuts. There's no stumps. And yet it's the most beautifully laced out, nothing touching, gorgeous tree you've probably ever seen. We just walked past the smooth, shiny tree. Is that like a tree? No, this, is, this, this here is, is a madrona. It's a native. And it's a really an awesome tree. Really hard wood, very hard. So everybody walk past, uh, as you walk here on the ground, everybody look at the ground and look at my soil. And then I'd like you to walk over there because that will give you a good view of this tree because you want to get perspective. Pretty hard to grow right here. I want you to look at this soil. Yeah. Now from an agriculture point of view, if you're buying property you want to grow food on and you came across this, what would your response be? Yeah, sure. I want you all to hear me. Everything you walked on and ate from has this under it. This is the reality. This is what is so awesome about the covering. It changes everything. It's so powerful. So step back and just take, take in this tree. Back over here because I, wa I want you to really see the beauty of it. It's, it's, it's amazing. You got to get perspective. You got to get, you know, get back so you can see the whole thing. You see how beautifully it's laced out, how nothing crosses over, nothing goes through planes, and there's no evidence it's ever been pruned. Are you seeing that? That's, how, that's the art of pruning. You see this rhododendron right here? You've never seen a rhododendron look like that. All rhododendrons you see are all compacted and dense, full of dead inside. Right. 
You see how lacy and open that is? How beautiful the wood looks? You see that that um, uh, um, uh, uh, pfft, fine maple along my house? See how airy and open it is? Again, this is how things should be pruned. From the inside out, the art of pruning is hiding your cuts. When you're done, it should look like you did no pruning. That's the art of pruning. Okay, we'll head over here to the herb garden. This tree here is a witch hazel. And it's one of the most beautiful, this is about 60 years old. I brought it here quite big. I dug it out of someone's yard. And the beauty of this tree is that it's a deciduous tree, meaning it loses its leaves. But in the winter, it totally blooms like dark orange flowers. And when the snow lays on it, the color contrast is overwhelming. This totally bright white up against all this orange is just like, Breathtaking. It is amazing. It is awesome. What kind of tree is it again? Witch hazel. Witch hazel tree. Does it produce the witch hazel? It's the herb, yeah. I'm not sure what part they get the missile part from, but that's the tree. No, don't. She can get her own. <laughs> and she knows where they are. She's just an opportunist. <laughs> Are you begging? Are you begging, Tirza? Tirza. You want a pear? I'll give you a pear. She loves these pears. They're not even ripe yet, but she loves them anyway. You want this pear? <laughs> well, I, I raised seven children, and they all lived here and ate well. They weren't immunized, they weren't vaccinated, and we carried no health insurance. Mm -hmm. And they're all strong, healthy Thank adults you. today. Mm -hmm. I'm just being real. This is how we're supposed to live. And there's no limit to what you can feed in this environment because there's so much food. And you have more people, you have more help. And so, you know, <laughs> you know the Amish, I love, you know, they have some interesting um, smart thoughts. You know, see, before the Industrial Revolution, children were an asset to a family. They were an asset. Today they're a liability. You see how things change? I love the Amish mentality. They say children growing up, the first seven years they're a liability. The second seven years, they produce enough to pay their way. And the third seven years, they produce enough to pay their way and pay back for the first seven years. Ah. Yeah. You know, and again, when you, when, when, you, when you realize that you pay your way and that you're beneficial, it does self-esteem big time. Really, it's just, it's just, again, such wisdom, you know. We were created to work, created to be productive, and just to be in a place where you're taking away from a drain is hard on your self-esteem. Mm -hmm. I'll just give you an example. I had this most really neat man helping me this uh, last spring. We're, he come every Friday. And he had such integrity. He was like in his early 20s. He had such integrity, he turned down $44 million by not lying for his mother in court. $44 million. He wouldn't lie, and he didn't get it. And he's coming here working for me. Living in that kind of wealth, he never was trained how to work. And I'm amazed he didn't know how to dump a wheelbarrow. He dumps the wheelbarrow, he does all this. I says, look, look here. You take the wheelbarrow, you tip it open, you bag the handles, and you lift back, and everything's out. And he's just in total shock how easy it was. And he so loved coming here because I was training him how to work, how to do things that he never do before and his, his self-esteem just so rose because I'm capable, I can do stuff. It was huge. And it's, it's so mind-boggling to me how in this culture I'm living in, how few people know how to work. Because they're never trained. You go to public school, there's no work you're doing. I mean, it's just, we're so disconnected from life in this culture we're living in that we don't know how to do basic, simple stuff. The entitlement generation right there. There it is, yeah. It's, it's, it, and, and it's so pathetic because they themselves don't feel good about themselves. When you're competent, you can do stuff, you just feel good. It does, so. When you're not, and all you're doing is taking away from, you don't feel good in here. You weren't made for that. You were created to be productive and an asset. You get blessed by giving. And it's just so pathetic how we've got a whole cult, a culture that just is missing it, you know? And so it's just, it's, um, and it's, it's really, um, like I say, I see it all the time because people come here to help me, you know, and it's just amazing how they don't know how 
to work, how to do stuff because they never never were taught. A lot of kids are growing up in apartments. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Their yeah. parents are at work. Mm -hmm. But they can Twitter like crazy. <laughs> well, you know what? <laughs> yeah. Snowflake. You know, you know what I saw growing up. I watched the destruction of our culture. My parents took me to the um, Rose Bowl to hear Nikita Khrushchev explain how he'd destroy our country without firing a shot. And I watched it happen. When I was a child in Los Angeles, so I grew up, we knew all of our neighbors. We were in our neighbors' homes. We were just, everybody was community. We were just totally connected. On hot summer nights, we'd be on people's porches, hanging out, playing board or card games, and just visiting. When the television was created, and I was there when it happened, my parents didn't get one because they didn't believe it would be good for us. They wanted us to read books. I watched communities shut down. We go to people's house to hang out and, and do card. Oh, we can't come out. We gotta watch this program. And I watched communities shut down. We're talking like shut down. Today in homes where parents are with their children, they don't talk to one another, they're texting mm -hmm. yes. in the house. Mm -hmm. I'm just telling you, man, we've gotta wake up to what's being done to us. Mm -hmm. This is not to our best interest. You even see people dating and they're both on their Yeah, phones. texting, yeah. Yeah, they're not talking to each other. Is, is, is this disconnect at the highest level? Yeah. It's just, I'm, I'm telling you, man, it's significant. It's huge. And then we go on Facebook to have community. Yeah. <laughs> so backwards. It is. So, I hate it. Well, it's called influence, and it's what's happening. And we got to, you know, I sent, you know, we've got to come against it and just, you know, we're not going there. Now, I want to point out something here to you as we walk by. You see this mint that's growing in my pots? You know why it's in my pots? Because if you plant it in wood chips, you would never stop it. There are some things you can't contain, such as mint. And over there, I got comfrey. Comfrey is often food. It's over there by that, by that um, tree next to the... Um, that, that, that barrel, that's comfrey. But those two plants don't ever plant in wood chips because you'll never stop it. <laughs> if you like mint, this tastes good. You can sample leaf. It's quite, quite good. Do you grow tomatoes? Yes. Oh, okay. You see those metal panels over there? Uh -huh. That reflects the sun. If you look in front, there's, there's rocks that retains heat. And I grow t tomatoes there. I just, the creator is just so helpful. You see, I used to have, this used to be a space right here where I'm growing these figs. I used, my kids, we used to have a fire pit here because my, my kids were young. We used to always have fires out here at night and hang out, you know. Because I started growing these figs and stuff. Thank you, you're so, so sweet. And so I had this fire pit over here and, I'm, and, and this last year I'm talking to God. I said, now God, I can't have fires anymore so I'm, gro I'm growing fig trees. What do I do with these rocks? Now see, in my mind, these rocks are going to be an irritant to have to move and find some place to get rid of. Are you hearing me? I got to move these rocks. What do I do with them? God says, go put them around the front of your tomato places as heat sinks. And what blew my mind is when I did it, every single rock fit. There was nothing left over. It was like, I love God. And again, the word is you have not because you don't ask. And he has these most amazing ideas how to deal with issues in your life that you think are a negative that he just turns around and make good because he's just good. And he knows how. It's just, he's so fun to work with. Now, you see these fig trees here? You see how healthy and nice they are? You know why they're here? There's a reason. My first fig tree I planted over there where one is off to the side. And every winter, everything would get burned back and I just have major loss. Then I'm walking over here. I, used to, I feed my chickens and I walk along this path. I'm noticing in the winter, it's a lot warmer here than over there. And I'm realizing these trees act like a blanket. They're holding heat in. See, this is south facing, so I'm getting full sun. Because I have this blanket back here, it's warmer. And I'm going to plant another fig tree over there because this is the most amazing space to grow figs because it's protected. Now, I want you to notice this little demonstration here. You see that lavender plant right there? Does it look like you, that it's lacking something? You see the blueberry growing right next to it? And this blueberry right there? Here we have the opposites of pH. 
that lavender wants to be in an alkaline environment and the and the lavender i mean the um blueberry they want it to tell you like you know 4.5 kind of thing like really acid and they're growing side by side in wood chips totally happy mm -hmm. i'm just telling you these things just really really impact me big time mm -hmm. and just reveal the amazing design god created. see god created nature at 7.0 is balanced and at that point everything can grow in the same place because it's center mm -hmm. it's so huge and the beauty is i'm not doing anything there's no water there's no fr it's just nothing but wood chips laying on the ground and look at the color of the foliage on that blueberry. I mean, does it get nicer than that with fertilizer? Nope. It's just like amazing. Mm -hmm. And we had so many figs this year. It was just awesome. Now, for those of you who live in this area where you can't grow figs, this variety is the only one I know of, except my wife just found one on the porch called Olympia. I'm going to plant it because they get ripe here. This is the only one that gets ripe here. And so if you want to have figs, you can come by in the fall, winter, and I'll give you a stick. And a stick in the ground, in three years you'll have fruit from a stick in the ground. It's phenomenal how quickly they produce and abundantly. And if you look, look at the foliage, how beautiful it is. No bug bites it. It's just an amazing, wonderful tree. How and do you plant a stick? Just put it in the ground. The more you put it in the ground, you, 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 you see along that stem, you see each little lobe will produce roots. So the more in the ground, the more roots you get. So plant it deep. And what you're going to love is all of these fall off, if they haven't already, and it looks dead to you. And just about the time you forget that you put it there, out of the ground are coming these gorgeous green shoots. And you realize, that was that fig tree I for forgot about. It's growing. Yeah, it's so fun. It's now those figs there, you see, if I was in California or Israel, I'd get a second crop. But here it won't happen. It's not warm enough. So those will all fall off. Desert King. Now, does anybody particularly enjoy sweet? Yeah. yeah. I want you all to take a, to the, go to this um, fennel plant and pick some of that foliage, that fern, and eat it, and get ready for the most amazing impact of sweets you've had all day. Oh, go do it. You're gonna blow your mind. That stuff there. Does anybody grow fennel? One came up from all the seeds I planted. I cannot believe this almost like candy. Uh, uh, if you so have, sweet. if you if you've grown fennel, <laughs> you gotta taste this because yours doesn't taste different. like this, is it? No, it tastes like uh, licorice. It's awesome, and I want you all to track with me. Look at look look at the ground. Look at what it's growing in. Nothing but wood chips. Period. Are you getting? Are you starting to connect the dots about nutrient density and minerals? See, it's minerals that give flavor to food. Minerals give flavor to food. And you're not going to get that with, wow. with, 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 with fertilizer, That's ever. Expensive. It's awesome. Mm -hmm. It's potent, mm -hmm. delicious, like over the top. Is anybody growing strawberries? Yes. Anybody growing strawberries? Yes. You see how this well. looks in September? Does, that, does your strawberries look this good? No. Can I tell you what's happening here? And, and this you'll never get out of a book. And everybody who does strawberries, you've got to hear me because this is powerful. You see, strawberries send out runners. Yeah. See them here? Mm -hmm. And over time, in your strawberry bed, they get very compacted. Mm -hmm. And the challenge is, the new growth on the top is what you want to keep because that's productive. The stuff below, the old stuff, you got to get rid of. So I'm out here doing this thinning process. I'm talking to God. This is God. You said your yoke is easy, your burden is light. This isn't. Mm -hmm. How would you approach this? He says, just bury it. Just cover the whole bed with wood chips. Now, in the, in the fall, winter track with me, how's your strawberry bed look in the winter, fall? Dark. It's yeah, brown, brown, dead brown, leaves. Brown. It's ugly. Mm -hmm. It's nothing, no asset to your yard. Mm -hmm. So under wood chips, you don't see that. It's all beautiful wood chips. Here's the genius of the Creator. I so love this. Under the wood chips, all those leaves mm -hmm. compost and become fertilizer. And here's what's awesome. In, in April, as the new shoots come pushing through, they're staggered, not crowded, and all the old ones that can't push the wood chips die and become fertilizer, mm -hmm. and you have a bed of totally new productive growth. Wow. Look at these plants. They're all new. All young growth. Mm -hmm. Now, I want you to do me a favor there, my friend from Montana, because yes. you're a good-sized guy. I want you to walk full weight across my strawberry bed. <laughs> full weight. Wow. Just step down full weight. Keep coming. Are you noticing he has having no impact? Yeah. Are you realizing that your strawberries in dirt would be smashed? Yeah. 
are you getting? These incredible, unending benefits of wood chips. The wood chips create this totally porous, buoyant, flexible surface underneath that you can walk on and not hurt your strawberries. So you'll cover all this with wood every chips? every fall. Bury the whole thing. The whole thing. Bury it all. You don't take a it doesn't take a lot because look how it bends down. It doesn't take, take a lot. Doesn't take a lot, but just enough to cover. And then you get this amazing growth. This has not been watered all summer. It's been dry. It's just so huge. It's like so over, the, and it's so quick compared to hours of thinning. It's like you know, 20 minutes with using a wheelbarrow to cover and spread it because you're done. This one here, I don't know the name of it. Some some man gave it to me. And he died shortly after. But I, they get the size of golf balls. I mean, they're really big, and they're like you, if you came here in the spring, you'd be utterly blown away, man. They are so good. Now, is any done now? Yeah, because let me tell you about strawberries. The ever-bearing ones have no flavor. No comparison to the ones that bear once a year. The ones that bear once a year really are, nutri are really have great flavor. And so my sense is, since I have so many things going on, why not just plant good stuff? I like to have strawberries all year. And so when sweets, and I have raspberries happening. Now, does anybody um, use thyme, the herb thyme? Yes. This is going to flip you out. And I want you to be very careful how you use this. Take a very tiny, we're talking tiny piece of this thyme and taste it and get ready for one of the most amazing shocks you've had all day. The potency is going to blow you away. Whatever it's called, that was a kick in the mouth. And, and think about all the time you've bought in the store in comparison to what you just ate. <laughs> Are you getting potency? Are you understanding the power of minerals? It's huge. Oh, it's like wow. over the top, man. Like, really? It's, got a light to it. it's strong, it's potent. It's just regular time. <laughs> it's time, right? Just time. Wow. Now, to that flavor that's hard in your mouth right now, wow. go over and get some of that lemon balm. That'll take it away. What's no, no. This? Over, over the, that one over there, where, where the guy with the, the, like the gray. Yeah. Th this is this is um, marjoram and, and um, um, uh, um, oregano. Yeah. That's an herb my wife grows. It's, the foliage is delicious. Eat it. I don't know what's name. My wife's an herb uh, is a is a midwife, and she uses all these herbs in her practice instead of drugs, because they're really effective and they're no, they're non toxic. I can't taste it after that time. So it's wrong. This is this is lemon balm. All lemon balm, yeah. Now for you gardeners, I want I want I want gardeners who are who are knowledgeable about plants to identify this plant that's growing in front of my blueberries. The, the ground cover in front of my blueberries. Yeah. No, this is white sage. What's this ground cover? Yeah. That's wasabi. You know why, you, you know why you're not, you can't identify it? Because nobody grows it. You know why no one grows it? Because it's supposed to be hard to grow. The only way they grow it commercially is under black cover hydroponically because wasabi only grows in nature in standing water in full shade. I want you to notice where this is growing. It's growing in full sun with no water. You want to see something awesome? You know what this plant is? This is white sage. This only grows in deserts with no water. And I'm growing them side by side. I don't know about you, but I had to ask the creator because I couldn't wrap my brain around it. Now this plant here you're standing on it's from Israel, and it also is a plant that grows in the desert, growing next to my wasabi. So I had to ask the creator about this, like, wasabi next to sage. You know what he told me? It made me cry. It was huge. He said, in the wood chips, there's enough air space for the sage to hang out in the open space and avoid the water. But if wasabi wants the water, it can go where it is, but they have the option. I just started bawling. I was so blown out at this incredible design, how God created his environment the most perfect environment that everything can live in and they can choose. I'm just telling you, man, it's huge. And you, and you look at our, in contrast to how we live, we're trying to prepare this for that. Prepare that. We're working our tails off, trying to create healthy environments that don't last. We're in nature, in his environment, you can grow everything in the same place, you can totally leave, it doesn't need any retention, and everything thrives because every part is needed and the plants can choose. It's just, I'm telling you, man, this God is awesome. He's just incredible. So sample a leaf and taste that wasabi because it's really good. You'll, the leaf is not as hot as the root, but it's very flavorful and good and you'll love it. And you'll know when you eat it, it's wasabi. I'm not lying to you.
Yeah, that's good stuff. <clears throat> that's a, that's an herb. Mm, good. Isn't that wasabi good? It's like it's not as hot as a root, but it's that, and, and see, I, I love using the leaves in my salad because they really make your salad really really um sp spicy and nice. Yeah, everything goes in the chickens at my place. Every all my yard waste. Because see, the beauty of the chickens is is that they compost it all. And so and so, just I just want you to re re those of you who who do gardening don't have chickens. When you have huge broccoli plants and those great big squash that, that squash plants, I got to take up. For you to deal with that, for you to deal with that is a lot of work. Chopping it up and breaking it down. And the beauty of the chickens, you just take all that there. They shred it to pieces with their feet, eat what they want, and turn it back into that gorgeous stuff in my garden. I'm just telling you, man, it's so amazing. Why do you strain it? You said you use a screen. Because you, it, you see how it goes in there? There's many different sizes of materials. Some are broken down, some aren't. And so by screening, I'm getting a very constant, you know, fine, beautiful material without all the stuff I don't want. And so if the stuff that doesn't go through will stay there and, and keep breaking down. But the, but, the, but the beauty of it is, is that in this environment, it's in a constant state of upgrade. Let's walk over now. Now, is anybody here familiar with what it smells like when you come to a chicken pen? Mm -hmm. I want you all to walk around here, go to my chicken pen, and clear your nostrils and pick up the chicken odor. Yeah, major. I get ripe ones before I never did. Huge difference. Are you noticing the chicken odor? Not so much. Are you noticing any chicken odor? Chicken odor. Is anybody picking up a chicken odor? You know why there's no chicken odor? There's a reason. The chicken manure is so lost in the mass of organic yard waste, you can't even find it. You see, chickens stink when you have concentrated chicken manure. There's nothing concentrated here. It's so spread out. If you look at my chickens, usually when you come to a chicken pen, what do the chickens do when you show up? No, they run to you trying to get food because they're hungry and they think you're bringing them something. You all noticed my chickens never even noticed you showed up? They totally ignored you? You see the state of being they're in? Totally relaxed, laying down like they're not hungry? Well, they're not. Because my chickens, obviously, you can see all the zucchini out here, all the apples, all the stuff they haven't got around to eating yet because they get far more than they can eat. And the reality is my chickens are eating better than most people. I'm serious. Most, most humans are not eating this quality of food. And so the whole concept of feeding your chickens chicken food dead cracked grain is insanity are you hearing me mm -hmm. you, you don't give them any grain have you ever looked at a pheasant in nature a male pheasant the beautiful feathers they have this is the, this is do i give them any, any any chicken grain this is your answer to your question Thank you. have you ever noticed oh. a pheasant in nature the the, the beautiful yeah. feathers they have mm -hmm. no chicken in any chicken pen fedding grain looks that good who is feeding the pheasant grain? I don't know. <laughs> they're not getting grain. Now they get some in the summer when the grass goes to seed, but all winter long, mm -hmm. they're getting absolutely no grain. And they look that good. Mm -hmm. Excuse me. Mm -hmm. I'm just being real. I want, I, I want to get that we're not paying attention and that everything in nature is telling us that what we're doing is completely unnecessary and ineffective. It doesn't work. And the irony is we're paying money to do these wrong things, these negative things. Here's the irony of, of grain. When you buy grain from the store, unless it's a whole grain, it's dead food. Because once the grain is cracked, it dies. So you're spending top dollar to feed your chickens dead food. Excuse me. I'm just trying to be real. Conversely, my chickens get nothing but live food, organically grown, totally fresh. They don't get around to it because you eat it when it's fresh because it's just too much. You see all the zucchinis. I mean, this, this is, I'm just telling you, you know, 
my chat. I had I had I have a whole bunch of little ones over there, those, those small black ones over there right here, because I need at least 25, 30 chickens to keep up with the yard waste I create. I was down to 10, 10 and they weren't keeping up. Now I want you to notice those holes they're digging out here, the beautiful soil that's in it. And I want you to notice my fence and beyond my fence. I want you to do the measurement in your mind. I have a foot, two feet, a foot and a half, two feet of awesome compost in this chicken pen. And you know, the, you know what's interesting? Is my garden's in quite good condition. But my challenge is I gotta get it out of here because my fences aren't working anymore. <laughs> It's, and I want you to get that at all levels, I'm being challenged with abundance. I have too much of everything at all levels. Mm -hmm. I'm just telling you, man, it's huge. <laughs> and the beauty is I'm spending no money. Mm -hmm. Everything you saw today was happening for free. Mm -hmm. I'm, God is just so awesome. He's mm -hmm. so good. And I'm so loving to show people how it really works. This is reality. This is how, it's, how, how it happens because it's how it's made. Abundance, generosity, unlimited. And always too much because that's just yeah. who he is. So it's just so good. Happy chickens. Happy everything. You know, but my dog's happy. I mean, and if you notice when you came, the peace that's on this place, well, that's presence. And see, they all experience that peace. You know, and that's just a, a really nice environment to live in. You just will do well in a peaceful environment. It's just, again, it's just, it doesn't get better. And you can see, you, you can see how the chickens are working, see how their feet are always moving and stuff. So they're, I say, this is my soil manufacturing plant. The egg's just a bonus. That's just the extra. This is where they, they process all my, all my, all my material, my yard waste into wonderful soil. Was, uh, we just got some chickens for the first time and I was wondering, do you use any kind of bedding? Uh, yeah, in the chicken pen, if you don't cover the floor with some kind of bedding, the manure will compact and you'll never get it off. It's a labor. So what I use in my chicken pen, I have wooden floors, and I, I bring in like five inches of wood shavings. And then, and what's so nice in there, you see as a chicken manure homogenizes with the wood shavings, it makes wonderful compost for the garden. See, at all levels here, I'm creating the most amazing stuff for my garden, all for free, conveniently providing me this amazing stuff. It's just, again, it's just, it's just, again, I'm so getting that the design of nature is so powerful, so beautiful, and so abundant. And so every level, everything I'm doing here is productive. Nothing is a negative. Nothing is a drain, like I gotta do that. This is a drag. No, it all works, and it's all really productive. So I just tell people, I could not imagine living without chickens. They do so much work for me. They create so much incre incredible resource, and they just do so much. I couldn't imagine, I couldn't be without them because they do so much. I mean, to have to deal with, I, you, those plants out there are gonna, you know, I got, they're huge. And to get all that stuff and chop it all up and compost it, be a lot of work. I just throw it in a wheelbarrow, dump it in here, and they deal with it, you know, and make soil for me. So it's just. And then you come back with the wheelbarrow and, and take it back. back out. Mm -hmm. and, uh, I'm, and what I'm so getting in the spirit, I want you to hear me, is, is this how God made it? God is all about beautiful recycle. Everything he's made, and here's the scripture, from dust we came, from dust we turn. Everything God's created turns back to dirt, everything. And he made it that way. It's such a beautiful design. So there's nothing toxic, nothing wasted. Everything is returned. And it's such a beautiful order, you know? And it's just so, so nice finally connecting to it, understanding how it works, because that's the design. And it makes it so easy for you. Just, it's not work. And you don't have to buy anything. It's all free. Mm -hmm. Yay, God. <laughs> what kind of chickens do you have? Those black ones are, are, are um, wyotas. Uh, the rooster came from Canada. I don't know who, what kind he is. Someone gave it to me. It's really beautiful. And, yeah. and the, the, the brown chickens are red star. Okay. The white one over there is, uh, is, a, is, a, is, a, corn, is a is a white leghorn. But that's their varieties. <clears throat> For the bedding, we just bought this stuff. You know, these wood shavings from the store. And Pine just, shavings. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. then we just throw it on the, the garden. I wonder, is that, but you think that's bad for us? Well, the wood shavings would not be good in the garden. Here's why. I'm glad you said this. You never want to use bark or sawdust or shavings in the garden. Here's why. There's nothing green in it. That material came from a part of the tree that had no green leaves. If you notice where people use bark in their yards, plants aren't growing well unless they fertilize. They gotta fertilize. 
because there's no green material. But in the, green, in the chip branches, which are needles and leaves, the green material, that's what's bringing the life force back to the ground. It's that green material. If you look at the branches, they're probably like 80% needles and leaves, green. Where the sawdust, or the bark, doesn't have green, and nothing will grow on it. I never understood that. I thought yeah. it was just the bark that you... No, no, it's, 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 it's chip branches, needles and leaves. And again, if you, look, if you look in nature, very rare does a tree fall over leaving the wood and the bark. Mm -hmm. But what happens every fall is all the needles, all the leaves and all the needles and leaves fall. Mm -hmm. And so if you just observe nature, mm -hmm. you start connecting dots and realize, yeah, this is huge. And, and being, I used to do landscaping, we used to use tons of bark. We had to fertilize. I'm looking at this stuff. It's so, you know, on a pasture this big, it'll, it'll support six sheep. It's an acre to a quarter. I had a farmer bring in 54 adult sheep one year. 54 on an acre to a quarter. The reason he brought them in was he, his pasture is chemically fed and the sheep eaten down, he wanted to reseed and get it back. So he thought, I'll have them here for about a month. They'll have it all eaten down, but give me time to get mine reseeded up. So he brings them here in, in April. He didn't take them out until October. And what got his attention, because he's a good shepherd, he'd come every week to see how they're doing. Mm. And what blew his mind was every time he came, his sheep were laying down during the day. Mm. And he, he called me, he says, I have never seen this. I've been doing sheep for 37 year, 30 some years. He says, the, the sheep on my pasture are on their feet all day long, walking and eating. Mm -hmm. When I came to your place during the day, they're all laying down. <laughs> and so the Holy Spirit brought to mind Psalm 23. He lays them down in green pastures. And I told him, on your pasture, they're malnutrition. They're hungry because your grass is no good. On this pasture, they're satisfied. And they're laying down because they're not hungry. It was so huge to him. It's like, whoa, this is huge. And 54, he didn't take off to October and he never got my grass down, 54, an acre and a quarter. It was dramatic. It was like, I love it. And this is what I'm so enjoying about this. It's just like, it, it silences every skeptic. You can't argue with evidence. I don't care what your thought, your worldview is. You can't argue with evidence. It's, it's what it's doing. <laughs> and I'm not feeding it. I'm not, you know, using chemicals. It's just the natural response. Oh, when I grow, uh, um, you know, I had my, my first back to eating garden this year. That was the first year was this year. And, and so my potatoes didn't do very well. I guess the ground was too hard. And so, you know, I got some tubers. I got some nice potatoes, but not many at all. So what you want to do is you take your very best, and you, and you should have done it when you harvested. I did. Put them back, and then put eight inches of wood chips over that, eight inches of wood chips over that whole space you got them planted, and during the spring, summer, water well. And next year's gonna blow your mind. You'll be amazed at the difference. And every year, it's gonna compound. Well, when I, when I harvest and I bring the potatoes out and I take my biggest one, like you said, and I put it in the ground, is it okay if I take my pitchfork and loosen all that soil up? No, it's a lot of extra work. Well, it's, it's pretty packed because I watered all did you, summer. Did you see the soil that you walked up behind my house? Yeah. Is yours any more compact than that? No, it's not that bad. Do you see this stuff here? Yeah. This has that under it. And you can get, get down and start digging. And you're going to find, you'll never find that stuff. I had a guy come here, he, when he, he saw what I had over here, he came from Idaho, young guy. He got over here in my, in my strawberries, got on his knees and started digging with his, his hands. He's down to his elbow pulling up rocks and he's flipping out because he saw what I had. And he's down to his elbow and he's in the rocks and he's moving it with his hand. He's moving it with his hand. Mm -hmm. It's not compacted anymore. Mm -hmm. And that potato bed that you had next year will not be compacted. You're gonna be amazed that you're gonna move it all with your hands and you're gonna get, this is how it works. And you're gonna find every year you're gonna go deeper because it just keeps multiplying. It's just, it's awesome. It's just like- well, My best potato plant was one that I saw on the video and I just, uh, it was one that didn't have many sprouts on it. So we put it in the garage and let it get ripe, you know, and then we brought that out and I just put it on, I just moved the chips aside and I put it right on the soil, you know, and then I just put like 12 inches of chips yeah. over the top of it. That was my best potato plant. Get I it. mean, there was just get potatoes it. Well, see, 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 everywhere. You know what just happened right now? I want you all to hear me. That was God speaking to him. 
he had a spontaneous thought. He wasn't looking for that. You weren't trying to find that. That just showed up to validate what I just said. Are you hearing me? God just spoke to you. He said, I'm telling you, he's telling you the truth. You had evidence. And he brought that experience to your mind right now when you were looking for it to validate what I'm saying. That's how God speaks. That's his voice, a spontaneous thought. So you just had a God encounter. He just spoke to you. That works. What he's saying is real, and yeah. you just experienced it. And I brought it to your mind to let you know that's reality. I just, I, I love him. You see, this is, this is how he speaks. This is spontaneous thought. He wasn't looking for that. That just showed up to confirm what I said. I love him. So for those who think you don't hear from God, that's really how easy it is, how normal it is. Yeah. Yeah, I noticed you uh, give all of your leftovers to the animals. So chickens. Chickens, yes. So you don't grind them up and try to put them as fertilizer on your... No, because you see, I, I was raised in a Swiss German culture. In a Swiss German culture, everything has a place and should be in place. It's all about order. And to have a whole bunch of ground up nasty stuff in my garden where I'm trying to grow food is an irritant and it's ugly and it's not order. And so for me, it's so much nicer to take it in that funky, messed up, lousy form in here, have them process it and take it out in that beautiful, gorgeous form you walked on. Yeah. It's just more convenient for me. Right. And we're all made different. But for me, order is very convenient yeah. uh -huh. and it just looks good and, it's godly. and it makes me feel good here. Mm -hmm. And so I'm very attracted to order. It's just uh -huh. how I'm wired. Uh -huh. I had a, my wife is a teacher. She, she's a midwife. She teaches women all. This, this, this young woman came here, and she's a gardener. And she has she's a typical you know gardener. And she's got everything growing in the same place. And it's just one you know good dense mess. And she and I loved her comment. She says, you know, I can sit at the table, look across your garden, see what I want, walk out and get it, and not get dirty. Mm -hmm. I looked at her and says. That's called convenience. Mm -hmm. And convenience mm -hmm. is really cool. There's nothing wrong with convenience. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so you could plant more intensively, but you choose oh, not to. Oh, far more. I just haven't. What am I going to do with it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what are you going to do with all that? <laughs> and that's my point. I can't even deal with that. Yeah. But what, what I'm trying to do is do this stuff in, in small sections just yeah. to demonstrate yeah. this is the reality. And it's not about multiple acres. It's about a small space densely planted is unlimited in its production. And there's absolutely no depletion to anything around it. This is what I want the world to get. Because this is something that you were told doesn't work. And I want you to get this is a reality. This is really how it's designed. And so I'm, I'm, I'm finding that I'm going to do more planting under my trees. Because things just do better. You know? And so I'm just hoping I can get more. Now, fortunately, my, my wife is a midwife, and these women who come for their prenatals, every time they leave, they pack out a lot of stuff because she wants them to have good babies. And so it's just so fun to watch people. People just drive in my yard all day long during the week and just help themselves because I just love <laughs> sharing and like people to get well. And so, but what so amazes me is that after I do groups of people like this every Sunday, you walk through my garden, there's absolutely no impact. You can't tell anybody was here. And you know what? You know what I'm getting in the spirit is that God thinks different than we do. Have you noticed that? He thinks different than we do. He says, "If you want to be first, be last. If you want to be great, become a servant. If you want to get, give. If you want more fruit, prune, subtract." I love it. It's opposite how I think, but it works. It works as I give away so much. I get so much more. There's no impact. And I'm just, it's so fun. It's like awesome to live in that environment. Like, ah. You know, I was thinking, gee, we're eating his food, but now I look in here and I guess not. You didn't, you, you, you didn't impact my food. Uh -uh. And that's, that's, why I, that's why I do this. I want people to get that I'm not just, you know, I'm, on this film, you think I'm, I could be, you know, just talking off of my head trying to say, this is reality. Yeah. This is really real. And this is why I, I, I'm so glad you're here because your, your day impacted you. You saw things that you didn't know were true. Mm -hmm. And it can't be taken away from you because you saw it. You tasted it. I love that scripture. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Mm -hmm. Now you see, if I was running, I'd do it in reverse. I'd say see and taste. But there's something about your taste buds that open up your understanding to revelation that 
don't, doesn't come through this. The taste buds are one amazing sense. You notice everybody's, wow, mm -hmm. that was sweet because it impacted you significantly, mm -hmm. your taste buds. Mm -hmm. And I think it's so significant, it says taste and then you'll see mm -hmm. that the Lord is good, huge. Well, I had such a problem with, uh, you know, my first back to Eden Garden, and then I would go out there in the middle of the night with my flashlight, find out what was eating all my <laughs> seeds and all my everything. And, you know, I had a just roly poly, mm -hmm. roly polies everywhere, yeah. pill bugs, you know. Mm -hmm. Now, and, you know, and of course I learned from you that they're God's police force, okay? Mm -hmm. But when the force is so forceful, <laughs> uh, what do you do? I mean, you don't have that problem well, here, here, now. Here, I understand, here, let's, let's look at, let's, what should look, I do? Look at history. Before chemical fertilizers in 1948, mm -hmm. the human race for 6,000 years grew all their own food. Mm -hmm. Are you hearing me? Mm -hmm. And occasionally you have bugs take out some stuff, but never whole plantings mm -hmm. of everything. Mm -hmm. As soon as chemical fertilizers came on the scene, that happened on a regular basis. And here's why. The plants weren't well. They were malnutrition. Mm -hmm. And nature knew it and took them out. And so you, what you need to get in your, in, your, in your heart, in your mind, when bugs show up, they're telling me my plants aren't well. They're not a problem. I don't need to eliminate them. I need to correct the state of health of my plants and they will leave. See, I have slugs everywhere here. I have all kinds of bugs and they don't bother me a bit. I have no problem with it because they're not affecting my plants because my plants are so full of water when I bite into them, they drown. <laughs> I'm being real. They drown. Yeah, see, my garden's and, not there yet. But it's coming. I'm just it telling you, it's, it's it coming. coming. And I'm going to tell you that for years, I had, after the wood shifts, because that's where I started, I still had earwigs, I had powdery mildew, I had scab, but I'm watching as the years progressed, those things just started getting less and less and less till today I have none. And so this is why I'm doing this. I'm speaking from experience. I'm not lying. In a healthy, nutrient-dense environment, bugs and disease are not an issue. If you look in nature, the only time bugs affect trees in nature is when you have a drought and they're dehydrated. Are you following me? In the woods, in nature, the only time the trees are ever affected by bugs is in a drought condition. They're not affected any other time. All those trees out there are not having any bug issues because the ground below is in a nutrient state, be, state of being. Mm -hmm. And But when droughts happen, that's when they show up. And here's what I got in the spirit how God made it. You see, if plants that are not well could produce seed, eventually that variety will become extinct. They get weaker and weaker and weaker. So God has insects wisely taking out and removing all the less than, than, than vital healthy plants so only healthy plants produce seed and maintain healthy plants. See, all of nature is connected to the Father in communication one with another for the support and maintenance of a healthy environment. All of nature gets it, and they're tracking. And so when something's happening to your garden that you don't like, then you need to ask, what's wrong with my plants? Because nature's not wrong. Nature's making no mistakes. They're not mean, not trying to take you out, not trying to eat your food. They're connected to the Father for the support and maintenance of the health. And so something in your yard is not healthy, they're trying to correct. They're trying to re remove, take away the bad so health. So you're telling me that cabbage loppers that are eating my lacinato kale, uh, they uh, I they think are they there just because like your lacinato uh, kale is not well. Huh? If you look at my kale over here, the the, the bigger leaves at the bottom yeah. are full of bug bites, and what I'm getting in my spirit is that they're dehydrated, they're over, and that's where the insects go. Mm -hmm. They're not affecting, they're not touching the healthy ones at the top because mm -hmm. it's full of water, but as they start finishing. That's when the insects take them out. And see, this is all part of everything being turned back to dirt. Mm -hmm. All this amazed design of compost and all the insects, all the bacteria, everything in nature is so connected to maintaining a healthy, beautiful thing of recycle throughout nature. And so when you get that in your spirit and you connect, then you'll start noticing. I have people call, I got aphids, this is water. And they call me, food. I can't believe it. I water my plants, the aphids are all gone. Well, the, the aphids indicated to you, your plants are dehydrated. They were a wake-up call. Water. If you do, they leave. It, it, it's, it's so simple when you finally get it. Did I tell you about the experience I had that really woke me up to this? I'm growing celery in my garden. <coughs> celery. Oh. And you remember, we talked about celery, see how tiny they are? So when, you, when you're planting, you try to drop one three fall. So they come in too thick. So I'm thinning my celery, and I got these gorgeous plants. They're really healthy. I'm thinking like, 
I'm not going to throw those. I'm going to plant them here in my herb garden. i got space over here. Now, if you notice my herb garden, I don't have slugs here. They just don't show up. I don't know why, but they just don't come here. So I planted this celery in my herb garden. The next morning, I come to feed my chickens. The place is covered with slugs <laughs> eating down the celery. Mm -hmm. And so I'm saying, God, talk to me. He always does this. Just watch. He does that all the time when I ask him to explain to me what's going on. Just watch. So I come back the second day, and all the foliage is eaten off the celery. They totally stripped it. Third day, I come back, and there's no slugs. And I says, and I says God, what's up with that? He says, when you move those plants, they were stressed. And they put out a signal, I'm stressed, I'm dying, take me out. Oh. And all the slugs who had never, ever come here before heard it and complied. On the third day, when the transplant shock stopped, they all left. The celery all grew back and was great. And they brought to my attention. Did you notice in your garden where your celery was? The slugs never, ever touched that celery? Because it never put out a signal. I'm stressed. I'm dehydrated. I'm dying. And I so got that day, I so got that day in my spirit that everything in nature is in relationship with one another, in perfect communication, all understanding how to be, except us. It was huge. And so I, I, I so get and I so understand that the bug is not a problem. He's not a problem. He has a job to fulfill and he's being very faithful to his job. And so if he's taking out something I don't want him to, then I need to correct the state of health of that plant and he'll leave it's really it's really that simple wow. and it's awesome and again you come back to this amazing creator see what I'm getting is that a creator of love God is love that's his essence would not create a pest mm -hmm. See, I was told in school insects are pests mm -hmm. but that doesn't line up with his character mm -hmm. are you hearing me yeah. mm -hmm. and so as I, as I start to adjust my mind to his reality, to who he is, then all this stupid stuff I've been taught has to go because it doesn't line up. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so what's so fun about that is that it, there's just no issues. You just don't get stressed out. Okay, this plant's not well. I'll lose that one, but man, I'll correct it. I won't lose the next. And so all these things are just places of upgrading your garden, making you have a better place that you wouldn't naturally because no one told you your plant wasn't well. Because your taste buds don't work, and you haven't had any good live food, you don't even know what good t food tastes like, you're satisfied with, with, with less than good. And so it's really an asset to have insects yeah. bring to your attention, you need to help here, you need to make this better. They're really an asset, they're a blessing. And that's why it says in everything give thanks. <laughs> Those bugs give thanks for, thank you God. They're helping me wake up to, I gotta make some help, do some, do some upgrade here. Thank you, really. It's, it's really cool. I don't know. I killed them, but... <laughs> well, you don't I, need to. Well, I had squash bugs that just were take. They took out one zucchini, mm -hmm. and then uh, I took out the squash bugs, but you, and then you, you, that you, zucchini came black and gave me some more zucchini. Yeah. But, but you see, I have squash bugs, and I got a lot of zucchini out there. But you don't have any bugs, yeah. I had when I first came. Yeah. I had them all. Right. I don't, I don't now. Right. This, this is why I'm so motivated and passionate to do this. Because I, I've experienced the process. When I came, I had all of them. And I don't anymore. And so I, I really understand the reality. What I'm telling you is the truth. And I, and I'm, 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 I got evidence. I was there when I had all the bugs. And I don't. <coughs> Would putting more wood chips on the garden every year help, that, help the plants to be Well, here, here's the beauty of the wood chips. This is how it works. It's just, you know, you see, as this material lays on the ground, it's composting, turning back to dirt. Every time it rains or you water, you get compost tea. And what I'm finding is that every year my produce gets bigger and sweeter because more is going into the ground than the plants can take out. And so I have this compounding interest program going on. Where conversely, in the agricultural point of view, you're having to put more and more fertilizer every year and getting less and less. These, these farmers, this, is, this has got to be hard on the human psyche. Track with me. These farmers that go to school and go into debt to pay for an education to grow food are spending more and more each year to produce less and less. Mm -hmm. That has got to take you out in your psyche. Are you looking, what's your future? Mm -hmm. Spending more to get less and that's your reality? Mm -hmm. Where this is just in, in, in total contrast. I do less and less work mm -hmm. and get a higher and higher return. Mm -hmm. And here's what I'm seeing. This, you see, God who wrote the owner's manual knows how he made us. He made this very interesting statement. He it says, it's good for a man or a woman to bear the yoke in their youth. 
What are you saying up front? If you're going to have something of value, you need to work for it. But it's best you do it young. Because you get older, you have less energy. And what I'm so loving, you see my condition. I don't walk well. And I'm maintaining this entire place in this condition. And I'm not stressed. I'm not working hard. And I'm getting a higher and higher return every year. And I'm doing less and less work. I so love it. And I so love my dad. He knows how I'm made. And you see, this is so encouraging to me. Even though I'm not well, even though as far as walking, I know for the rest of my life in this environment, I'm going to have all the food because it can't help it. It just keeps getting better. And I had this amazing investment built. It's not going to go away. So it's just so powerful when you start connecting the dots and really seeing the reality of what this is all about. It's just it's so awesome. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's yay God, big time, man. Are like um, things like moles a problem in the garden? I have a cat. <coughs> And I don't feed the cat more than once a day. And the cat knows how to hunt. And I also have mole traps. Because I will not tolerate a mole to mess up my yard. My sense is, this is my home. This is private property. And you're a trespasser. <laughs> and you're not welcome here. You didn't jump over the fence. The chickens have a rat or mole. Yeah, that's, yeah I caught them. I just throw them in there. See, every, everything goes in. And, see, all, and so all the ashes, uh, I want you to hear me. Wood ash. See, I heat my house entirely with wood. <coughs> And all the ashes go in my chicken pen. Mm -hmm. You know what the most mineral rich substance on the planet is? Ash. Wood ash. Mm -hmm. It's the most it's the most mineral rich substance on the planet. Remember remember Joel Wallach? Joel Wallach, yeah. the dead doctors don't lie? Yes. Yeah. He was an intelligent man. And the government gave him in the eighties a thirty million dollar grant. We're talking million, not hundred not thousand. Which in the eighties was huge. Mm -hmm to study the importance of minerals on human health, $30 million. So he had money to travel. So he traveled the world discovering cultures who lived over 100 years, like 120, 130. He found these cultures had three things in common. The first is no electricity. The second is they, they grew all their own food, and the third was very interesting. They all heated themselves with wood and cooked with wood and put the ashes back in the garden. He commented, the most mineral substance on the planet are wood ash, and he connected the dots. When our food began to be completed was, was the discovery of electricity. Before electricity, the whole human race heated with wood and cooked with wood and put the ashes back in their gardens, mm -hmm. instinctively. Mm -hmm. And when electricity happened, that stopped, and that's when our food started becoming mineral deficient. Mm -hmm. It's really huge. Wow. It's amazing. Let me tell you the, tell you the lab results. I had a company in Montana who, who tests soil for farmers all the United States. It's a very large company. who, When seeing the film, wanted to check out my soil. They were just curious. So they sent a guy from Seattle to take some samples. And when you get a soil test back, you have two columns. One is the desired level. The next column is lab results. Desired level of nitrogen is 40. My lab results is 120. Desired level of phosphorus is 167. Mine was... 2,345. <laughs> Desired level of potassium is like 120 something and mine was 1,164. Coming down to the smaller numbers, zinc. Desired level is 1 to 6, mine is 21.5. And what I love about it, I use no rock dust. I didn't do anything to make this happen. This is all the effect of composting wood chips mixed with ashes. And it's huge. That's magnificent. How long do you think that it takes from the dirt you had to getting test results like that? Well, I've been here. That that, that happened in in, in um, 2011. That was five years ago. So that's 30 years. Mm -hmm. And and so and, and so what you're seeing here in the orchard mm -hmm. is a 30 year investment, 37 year investment. Now my garden is a lot less because I was stupid enough to to, to not know better. Do you guys have time to? I just want to tell you how stupid I was. Mm -hmm. When I'm building my house, see, I came here from Los Angeles because I wanted to grow food for my family. So I was blessed. I grew up in Los Angeles. My parents grew all of our food in Los Angeles. We had an acre property, and we grew all of our food. It was awesome. Never hungry as a kid. Just walk outside. You had amazing food. It was really good. And so I went through high school three years with not one, what, not one day of absence. Perfect attendance because I never got sick. Because mm -hmm. you eat good food, you can't get sick. Mm -hmm. When I got drafted, they had an induction center, and they give you a physical. When the dentist tests my, my teeth, he's yelling to the rest of the dentist, Come look at this! This guy has no cavities, no fillings! Wow. I'm looking at it like, cavities and fillings? What's that? Because mm -hmm. my parents never took us to a dentist. Because <laughs> we never ate junk food. We had live food. Mm -hmm. 
And if you look in nature, my dog's teeth, nothing in nature that brushes their teeth has cavities. The only beings on the planet that have cavities are those who brush their teeth. <laughs> Connect the dots, really. You know? And so I'm growing up like this. And so as I grew up and got married, had kids, I realized that LA is no place to live. You can't buy property. It's just toxic here. So I came here with the intent to grow food for my family. When we drilled a well, went, got half a gallon of milk, no water. So August 79, I'm building my house. It's a great year to build a house. The grass is all brown. The road coming up is all dust. It's totally dry. I'm saying, God, how am I going to grow fruit trees without water? I have no water. He says, you're looking at the wrong thing. Look at your trees. And these fruit trees were here 37 years ago. They were a lot smaller, but they were here. I'm looking at them. They look just like they do today. Bright green tips. Lush green. In this drought condition. And I says, God, if you can show me how you do these without water, because I pushed them out and I built a house. I show, they had shallow roots. If you can show me how you do these, I can do an orchard. So I went out to the woods. And I started moving this stuff. And I was in total shock. Because you saw my soil there. Out in the woods, I'm down to my elbow in this amazing, soft, damp material, and I got it. It hit me. Cover the ground. Wood chips. And that was the most amazing. What was so incredible to how brain that is, because we're creatures of habit. I'm telling God, like I was proud, now God, I'm going to show you how I can do a garden without water. I'm going to use a timer at night and water the garden without using it. And so for 17 years, I'm tilling this space out here. And if you look over there where those cars are parked, when you walk by, you're going to see all these rocks. That was a very low depression. I took all those rocks. I love that. That's my altar. That reminds me of the sand. That I took all those rocks out of my garden when I tilled for 17 years. So I'm out there in my garden. I'm pushing this stick down to set the string for a straight line. And I hit this. This is like 17 years into it. I'm hitting this hard pan like six inches. I'm thinking like, what's up with this? How come my hard pan's not breaking it? And God was like silent, like loud silent. He was not going to talk to me. And I, and, and I said, you're not going to talk to me? No, go in, go in your orchard and weed. So I go in the orchard and started weeding. And I just spontaneously, for no reason, just started moving these wood chips. I'm down to my elbow in this soft, gorgeous compost. And I got an angry scream and I was so mad. And I says, I have been killing myself to get this in my garden. I'm bringing in truckloads of organic chicken manure and amazing good stuff, tilling it every year. I don't have this. And I heard inside, well, we're in the garden the same way he didn't ask. I was so angry, I threw that tool away and started covering the garden with wood chips. <laughs> Three years into it, on an April day, I'm setting that, 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 that string and something inside, give it a push. I gave it a push and it broke the hard pan. I says, wow, the hard pan's breaking up. And simultaneously, I'm watching this robin pulling out this, this worm. And I heard inside, I sent those worms to break up your hard pan. And you kept killing with a tiller. Oh. Now that you're not killing them, they're breaking. I started to cry. I just <laughs> broke. Here in my insanity, I was working so hard to totally destroy this amazing body. And, and I had the orchard in my face. And I wasn't getting it because I was a creature of habit. Do what I was taught, never questioning the reality of it. It was so huge. It's like, ah, oh, incredible. I throw all the chicken pen. See, everything goes here, and this you is my the wood ash as well. all the wood ash. Every, <laughs> all, all, all winter long, I heat my, every, it's always okay. in there because I heat I, I, and see it's all. See, my, my, my chickens totally homogenize it all. It's this beautiful homogenized. So if I don't have chickens, can I just pour it on? Top you can. Of my wait, wood wait, chips? Again, the, and here's what you want. It's so okay. important what you just said. Right. Whatever you want, if you have chickens, if you have stuff out of your kitchen you don't like in yard waste, mm -hmm. take your wood chips and pull it back and lay that stuff on the ground and cover the witches because under the witches you won't see it. Mm -hmm. Out of your sight, mm -hmm. and it's going to break down and make compost. The wood ash, just throw over the top of the, the, um, the wood chips, the rain will carry it on down and you'll bless your soil. Again, if you notice in nature, God never mixes. Are you following me? He doesn't mix, He just layers. Are you hearing me? Yeah. If we would just pay attention to the master garden of the universe, how He does stuff, you think of all the work you're doing to mix and to tell, and it's just it's counterproductive. Just layer, because everything's going back to dirt, composting, it knows how to do it, and it doesn't need help. Just lay it on top and leave, because it's just it works the best that way. So we, we had um, weeds grow up through some of the wood chips that, that didn't have um, uh, paper or cardboard mm -hmm. down in that area. So what, what do you think the best way to get rid of those weeds would be? I was Pull them? And you're going to find the wood chips are going to pull easier because the ground's getting softer. And here's something I want to share with you about. Here's the thing that I really, I love this scripture and it's been so helpful to me. It says, don't despise the days of small beginnings. Mm. 
See, in our culture, under the influence of the devil, we want it big and now. Are you hearing me? And that's not reality. And when you approach a big space and you want it all now, you are going to be stressed out trying to get there. You're going to be running constantly. And you're going to have to be fixing stuff that's not working. And you're going to be in an amazing stressed place. But if you start small, a small space, and you start paying attention, as you progress, you get a lot smarter and you do it better. And you're going to find there's such wisdom in don't despise the days of small beginnings. You gain so much more by moving slowly, paying attention, and learning as you go. And try to take the whole thing on at once, doing it all wrong, having to fix and be stressed. I'm just being real because I did that first thing a lot. I've lived that way. And just, stress, is the, stress is the hardest thing on your body. It's the most draining, damaging thing you can do to the human body is stress. There's nothing worse. It's incredible. And he says, my yoke is easy. My bird's like, come check with me. Follow me around. Watch what I do. It's, it's, it's this whole idea of convenience and no stress. It's just such a fun way to live. You know? And if I don't get it done today, so what? I'll do it tomorrow. If I don't tomorrow, who cares? I'll be okay. It doesn't matter. Because in this environment, it's fine. I'm going to cover all, all this. you see, I haven't put wood chips here for years, but i got a whole bunch of wood chips now. My son's here to help me, so I'm going to cover all the wood chips. It's really thick, because I can. But it's been like, you know, 10 years before, since I've done it. But it's okay. You know, so again, it's just this, this whole concept of, in everything, give thanks, and just one day at a time, don't despise the days of small beginnings, and just be thankful, and you're good. When you and, request a batch of wood chips, do you put any uh, specifications on that, or do you just say as is? And wouldn't it be a lot quicker to go from zero to some number greater to regrind that into a smaller size so that it would break down quicker? Here's, the, here's what I love about the multiple sizes. And if you saw my film, the guy brought it to our attention. He says, if everything's in one size, you look in nature, you have multiple sizes. And by that, they all interconnect and stay together. When you grind it down just a really fine material, the wind will blow it away. It's, it's too light. And I'm seeing there's real wisdom in the multiple sizes. And that's how nature is. Nature is not all one size, it's multiple sizes. And so many times in my mind, what may look better and think better really isn't. So again, I always come to that place in Proverbs, in all of your ways acknowledge God. Always ask God, how would you approach this? Should I grind this down more? What would you? Now, you know, so, so just, you know, and again, he'll, he'll tell you. Now like in a, in a lawn area, you want fine material. So I use it in my lawn over there, and so I'll screen it and use the fine material because big chunks of my lawn isn't cool. And so depending on how you're using it will depend on the size. But in my orchard, it doesn't matter the size because it's all fine out there. But in my garden, I'm screening it because I like the finer stuff because I want to plant my seeds in it. So again, you just adjust for your space and how you're using it. And so they all, they all have places, but you want to, you know, ask and make sure you're doing the right thing for it. But there is an advantage to multiple sizes and it all staying together and breaking down nicely as opposed to all one size. Yeah, that would make sense. Years ago in a roadie bed, uh, I had a lot of brush in the yard, so I bought a good shredder, ground it up, threw in six inches worth of it, double ground it, and mm -hmm. it was six inches, small pieces. Mm -hmm. I threw some standard bark over the top of it, so it was actually quite tall. Mm -hmm. A couple of months later, I went back at it, all compacted down, I went through it, black, just amazing. Isn't it awesome? Because I watered it a lot, so yeah. it was just like, Broke down quickly. Yeah. Process? Yeah. See, it's this incredible. is this is so. So if you really want to speed up the process, you already have water. Nothing is nothing works like water to to break down to increase the composting process, and it's so cool. You said so fast so by accident. Yeah. She mentioned this a week or so ago. It reminded me of that. Yeah. I'm going to do it again. And see, this 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 is again is a spontaneous <laughs> thought. See, God just brought that to validate what what what, he, what he's hearing. You know. So it's just it's just it's if we're just paying attention, he's so there for us. And he's like he said. He sent the Holy Spirit to be our helper. We need help. And if we're paying attention, he's, been, he's really helpful. And it's just so sad how so much of it just goes over our head. We don't get like, that was God. He's trying to speak to me. He's trying to help me. I've been reluctant to want to overwater our stuff because the municipal water, it's got, probably got chlorine. chloride, chlorine. Yeah. <laughs> and so I don't know if that's harmful. If just well, here's, here's the beauty of, of chlorine. When it's on the ground or in a cup, in the air, it evaporates. So it's not going to stay there. Now the fluoride is different. So I would, I would just pray over your garden. Now the, something awesome about wood chips, and this is huge. This is so cool he brought this up. I got the most amazing revelation about wood chips. 
that I would have never gotten, except that this, this company who, who um, when the girls did the film, I made a statement in the film, I said that, that plants grown in a wood chip environment is gonna have a higher nutrient value than those with, with chemical fertilizers. So chemical fertilizers are really angry and they called the girl and says, that's not true. And the girl says, we don't know that. If you, if you document that, we'll publish it. So they went out and they found this nice standing loam soil and they tilled it to the max and they put the max chemical fertilizers. Now the chemical fertilizers, if you go over the max, you kill everything, everything burns. So they have a limit what they can put down. Mm -hmm. Next to it, they did the same planting in wood chips. When they tested the plants, they were shocked to find out that the stuff in the wood chips had a higher nutrient value. And so in their minds, natural minds, they thought, let's put the chemical fertilizers over the wood chips and upgrade those plants. And they did. And what they found when they tested them? No change. And so when I heard that, the Holy Spirit spoke to me and says, you remember that, that's significant. So a woman calls me from, from um, Louisiana, she says, I've been gardening my whole life and I'm in my 60s and I have beautiful fruit trees in my garden because you can in Louisiana, it's warm. When Katrina came through, all my fruit trees in my whole garden totally died. Salt water killed everything. And if I can do it again, I just feel like overwhelmed. And so I was spontaneously spoke, a thought came, do you have any wooded areas where you live? She says, yes. How are they doing? They're fine. Excuse me, they were covered with salt water, doing fine? And I says, I want you to get that covering on the ground acted as a filter and that salt never got to the roots. And so that chlorine, that fluoride over this, isn't getting to that plant. I'm just telling, and what I'm getting in the spirit is that when the Creator built, created this beautiful planet we live on, He knew He would have an adversary who would do His best to mess it up. He knew that up front. And so he built into it these amazing features of protection. And I so love, as I watch these chemtrails go over my property, I'm realizing that, that trash, that barium aluminum is not getting to my plants because these wood chips are filtering it out. Yay, God, it's huge. And it's so fun when he starts opening up and showing you how this design in nature just totally transcends all the issues because the Creator is bigger than all the issues. And it's not challenged by anything. It's just so awesome. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So as long as I don't uh, put a lot of water on when I'm doing the underlayer. Yeah, just you know, put, after you get the wood chips, go for the water. Okay. It, it'll be fine. And again, just, and again, pray, bless it. Father, thank you for my garden. I bless it. See, death and life are the power of the time. We don't realize how, when God created this amazing universe, he did it all by word. Yeah. All by word. He spoke. He spoke and it happened. And he created like himself. Words are powerful. And so blessing is huge. Bless your garden. Thank you, God, for this garden. I just bless it. And all this fluoride and chlorine, just take it out. I don't, I don't, you just, just get rid of it. You can handle that. It's not hard for you. And just have faith to believe. Faith pleases God. Nothing else does. So you just can't go wrong by believing. And having faith. And just, there's just no place for fear. Fear is a spirit. It's not an emotion. And it's just, you just want to be in total faith and confidence that even in spite of where I live and what I have to work with, God's bigger. It's not a challenge to him. Well, what are you growing for uh, your, your, uh, your winter garden? Winter garden is I have potatoes. I love potatoes. I can eat them every day. They're so good. And I put garlic with them. It's just the best. Do you cook them? I cook potatoes because okay. they're hard to eat raw. Because I know raw. you don't cook a lot of your food. I don't cook a lot. I, and then I have those winter squash. I have in the garden um, beets and carrots and kale, cilantro, all winter long. I, I really have quite a bit of food in the wintertime, a lot, a lot, and just unlimited, you know, just... Does it last all winter? I never go to the store ever, ever. And I was sharing earlier, this, there's this couple that's living in my place and swim in a trailer. She came up to me, she says, you know what, you told me when I came here, I wouldn't go to the store. She says, I didn't believe it, but when I go to the store now, the only thing I buy is toilet paper and cleaning, cleaning products. When I look at the food that I used to buy, I can't buy it because I'm eating incredible stuff here. And, I'm, and, and again, if you think about it, for 6,000 years, the human race didn't go to stores. They grew all their own food. This going to the store is a very new thing. And if you look at the health of the, if you look at the, health of the human race on this planet today, never in 6,000 years of human history has it ever been this bad, ever, ever. Well, the cleaning products are bad too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I make my own. Sure, and, and I'm sure she'll get there. Mm -hmm. 
you know, because she's just learning, but I'm just saying it's yeah, so so cool great. to watch somebody who came from a place of thinking, every, just completely being transformed because of the reality, mm -hmm. you know. And it just is progressional because you get like, well, I can use this, I can use that only that cleaning product, you know, kind of thing. It's toxic, you know. So it's just uh, what I'm seeing is just it's so awesome to watch people's lives being totally transformed mm -hmm. by the reality of the provision we have, and we didn't know it, we were lied to. Mm -hmm. well, my wife and I have been uh, juicing just. In the morning, mm -hmm. my wife's been making a juice every morning. So I'll go out in the garden, I'll pick cucumber and all that mm -hmm. stuff, and kale, and bring it all in the house, and then she throws it in, and the lemon, and, and everything. And and anyway, you know, I'll have that in the morning, and and sometimes I won't even eat until. Are you getting it? Seven o'clock at night. Are you getting I it? I I didn't eat Are you it. getting it? <laughs> you see, you got nutrient density. I mean, I eat a pear or an apple in the morning. I go all day long because it's nutrient dense, mm -hmm. and it's so awesome when you realize. This is the reality. And you see, the thing I'm seeing is in nature, there's no shortage. The animals aren't saying, there's not enough to go around. There's abundance because it's nutrient dense and they don't need a lot. Here's, here's the irony of, of our culture. You look at like, a, like most animals, these sheep, they have a mono diet. We're talking, they eat grass their entire lives, nothing else. Mm -hmm. They don't have a five course meal. Mm -hmm. Are you hearing me? And it's so amazing how we keep thinking that all this variety is good when it's very conflicting to your body. It's, when you think about it, you see that what, what breaks down proteins is different than carbohydrates. And when you mix it together, that stretches your body and weakens the effect of either one. So you're not getting good benefit. And if you look at nature, they're eating everything in season and only one thing. It's so, it's so basic. And again, this what I'm getting at, if you look at nature and what they're telling you doesn't show up, you're being lied to. It's not good. So you're talking about uh, variety in a rotation. Yeah. That, that in season. In, in season. season. And what I'm seeing is, and, and let me tell you something powerful about, about in season, two, two plants that are huge. Asparagus. Asparagus is an amazing plant. You know when it shows up in nature? Early spring. Which followed what? A winter when you had no greens. Are you following me? And so your body is craving greens and so you're motivated to be in your garden and planting greens because you're hungry for them. Your body is saying, I need minerals. And asparagus just pops up and says, hi, I'll hold you over. <laughs> now you track with me. When you eat asparagus and you go to the bathroom to urinate, mm -hmm. that odor that you cannot miss is huge mm. and nothing else you've ever eaten does that mm. let me tell you why the odor you're smelling from asparagus is the odor of minerals mm. and the reason why it's so potent is asparagus sends roots into the ground 14 feet not inches 14 feet into the ground and they are pulling up mineral content that no other produce anywhere approaches and when does god have that show up at the time of the year, you're the most mineral deficient. You think that's an accident, a coincidence? Tomatoes, another one. Tomatoes. See, I grew up in Los Angeles in the 50s when skin cancer did not exist. Mm -hmm. And I'm a Swiss German culture. I have light skin and my, I, my skin, you can see my nose. I mean, I burn all the time, big time. My skin is always peeling. And I'm not using, using any stupid um, sunscreen. Because mm -hmm. I want you to hear me. Don't you put anything on your skin you won't eat. Because your skin's your, your largest organ and everything's taken into your skin. If you won't eat it, you shouldn't put it in your skin. I won't eat sunscreen. Yeah. So I peel all the time. I did my whole life as a kid in Los Angeles. When I was growing up in Los Angeles, skin cancer did not exist. Mm -hmm. There was no such thing. Nobody had skin cancer. And you know why? Because back in the 50s, all tomatoes that were growing were growing outside in full sun. Mm -hmm. And they were full of phytochemicals that took out. That's right, because plants produce that to protect themselves. Yeah, if you look at, if you look at a tomato skin, this was, was interesting, they, they did a test. A sun-ripened tomato has 300 phytochemicals, 300. The same tomato in a greenhouse has 50. Mm -hmm. Can I tell you why? Light going through glass interrupts photosynthesis. Mm -hmm. Here's what's huge to me. Skin cancer today is rampant. It's rampant because all tomatoes today are grown in greenhouses. It's huge. Now track with me. When does the tomato get ripe? Uh, August, September, when the sun's the hottest. You think that's a coincidence? 
you women track with me. You ever look at a tomato skin? You wish you had skin that nice looking. That tomato gets direct sunlight, 100 degrees plus, all day long blazing on it, and it's totally smooth, no bumps, no blisters. It's a phytochemical that protects the skin from blistering. And when you eat it, you get the same protection. Now track with me. In climates where the sun's not hot, tomatoes don't grow. I'm just telling you, when you look at nature, you see how perfectly it's planned and designed. You're blown away, man. It's like, whoa, huge. Do you, uh, do you have a wood cellar? Do you store anything? No. Or you just come and pick it? it have you noticed um, animals have no refrigerator or root cellars? That's true. Uh, my kids love apple chips, and so they have a dehydrator and make them okay, for me because they enjoy eating them, the, you know. Dehydrated. But for my, myself, my sense is eat food fresh and seasoned live. You see, even drying, you lose, you lo you lose 5%. When you, this is good you brought this up when you can food you lose 95% of the food value 95% of the food value is lost in canning and here's why you bring it to high temperatures you kill all the enzymes and you pour all the food value off in the water because it's all in, and so that's the worst thing you can do freezing is next best but the finest way to preserve food is drying when you dry food you only lose 5% 95% of the food value is maintained in dried food so it's the best way to preserve is drying if you live in California, just put in the summertime, just put stuff in your car. It'll dehydrate great because it's it, it's, it's hot there, man. So, <laughs> yeah, air, and so warm climates, your car works great as a dehydrator, man, just because it's, it's hot inside. <laughs> you, you know, but but my sense is is that I have such amazing food here all year long, mm -hmm. and I love the seasons. Like like in the you see, see that see that that um uh, uh, uh it scratches your um nettle. In the spring, when that comes up, that is the most amazing, potent, powerful food. And I pick that stuff and I, and I eat it. I lightly steam it. Then the, in all my herbs, all season long, these amazing foods come in that all of nature is eating. Like my lamb's quarters. This is my favorite weed in the garden. I'm eating it all the time when I'm pulling because it it's so delicious. And I'm so getting that all these things we call weeds, God created in season to feed all the everything in nature who understands how to live. So you just, you just follow your dog around and watch what it eats. You might see my dog, here just a little while, I was eating that grass over there, you know. They, they, they'll tell you how to live. And all this stuff we do, it's not been good for us. Really. One thing I noticed um, from living in Kansas, we had the sugar maples. And they would give off those little helicopter seeds. Yeah, seed. Sheep, sheep love them. Mm -hmm. So we started tasting them, and they're sweet. Yeah. And they're seed. They're potent food. They're really major, major potent food. Again, it's just, it's so, um, again, what I'm seeing is influence. We've been so under the influence of the devil to rip us off. And we don't get it. And, 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 and that word is, you know, you, you, when you think about it, we're the only living beings on the planet that are influenced by the devil. Because it says all of nature is groaning and travailing, waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. All of nature is under the influence of the Father in communication one with another for the support and maintenance of health. It's only us that are under His influence. It's huge when you start connecting dots. It's amazing. And I'm so seeing now, it's really brought to my attention as all these things we're doing, which make no sense, which is totally counterproductive, is because of influence, because we know better, if you think about it. We know better, it makes no sense. Why do you do that? But we've done, we, we, this is how we're taught and trained and influenced for our demise. It's just, it's dramatic, it's powerful. Now, do you do um, beans or any of that type of I, thing? I like beans. Okay. I love beans and I love, I love seeds. Seeds okay. are powerful, you know, nuts are powerful, you know, and they, and they store well. And garbanzos. So, garbanzos and, and, and I love, you know, pinto beans. I mean, I love all the beans and, yeah. and, 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 and um, quinoa, all that is just right. awesome. Yeah. See, beans are seeds. They're potent food. They're, all seeds are the most potent foods there are. It's, just, it's, it's really awesome. Oh, thank you. Bless you. Well, you know, are, are, are you getting how simple it is and how, how it's all been given to us, all clearly revealed in nature, and how we've been lied to? We're not getting it. But you're here today, for, you know, spontaneously. You came, you know, and, and, and it was for a reason. It was... You, you had an encounter, and you, and hopefully this is going to adjust your thinking, how you look at things, mm -hmm. because what we're told wasn't true. 
And you know what's amazing to me about pharmaceuticals? It just shows you how you don't think. If you ever, ever, ever get a package insert to a pharmaceutical, package insert, oh my God. you have one line of benefits. You have paragraphs of side effects, right. all the way from nausea to headache to blindness to heart attack to death. death yeah. mm -hmm. side effects. And people are taking this stuff? Whatever you're treating doesn't approach that. And people are taking it. I'm just telling you, man. It just shows you we've lost our minds. We're not thinking. And I, I you know, I, I'm a veteran, and, and because of this issue, you know, they, they have me go all the time and get a blood test. And, do, and every time I go, they always ask you, "What drugs are you taking?" And I tell them, "I'm not drug deficient. I'm not drug deficient. Why would I take drugs?" And they get angry at you. You know? I says, "What vitamins are you taking?" I don't take vitamins. I eat live food. That's where vitamins show up. That's what they originally made. You know what's hilarious about vitamins? This is, again, this shows you how branded it is. I had a, a guy came and pumped pump, pump, pump my septic tank, and it was such an amazing experience. This guy was a real thinker and paying attention. He says, as soon as he popped the lid to my tank, he just broke out. He says, whoa, you must eat well. This is the most perfect compost I've ever seen. He says, this is amazing. I says, well, I eat stuff in my garden. And this guy's telling me, he says, I can, he says, the septic tank reveals everything that goes on in that house. I can tell what nationality they are. I can tell if they're taking chemotherapy. I can tell what vitamins they're taking. Everything is in the tank. One a day vitamins. He told me this is huge. At the bottom of the tank, they're in the same size, color, and shape they were in the bottle 10 years later. I'm just telling you, and here's the reality. Look at me. If you're taking a supplement, it's because you're malnutrition, so you repent and start eating well. But if you're taking them, make sure they're food form. Because if they're not food form, your body's not stupid, and it will never assimilate them. If it's not made from food, your body will send them out to defecation. Because it, your body is not stupid. It's huge. And people are paying a fortune for all these stupid vitamins that have absolutely no impact not even broken down in their body. Yeah, negative. Could be that a, a isolated synthetic vitamin A was thought to be good for you and cure disease, and then they started noticing yeah. that it was causing cancer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anything that man makes, he messes yeah, up. Yeah. They everything. Yeah. From everything. From and, and again, the reality is you can't improve on God. Every any time you change the natural order, hear me. Any time you change the natural order, it is only negative and degrading, only because you can't improve on God. He came from a place of all wisdom, all knowledge, motivated by love. You can't get higher. That's the ceiling. And when you change that, it can only go one direction, negative and degrading. Do you want to mention the microwave? Oh. Microwave is major radiation, full-on radiation. If you intended to kill yourself, you couldn't be more effective than exposing yourself to microwave. And if you think about it logically, to put this thing in this thing in a plastic container and have it cooked, the plastic not changed, and you think that's okay and normal? Excuse me? All, all, all the chemicals from the plastic just going straight in the I'm just telling you, man, and that plastic container that under any heat would melt doesn't. And the stuff's cooked. Your brain should speak to you. This is abnormal. This is not good. And the whole idea, well, most of you, you don't even need to cook. You know, again, this is the, it's all about convenience, all about, you know, lying to us, making, it's just, you know, if, and again, something, I want you to hear me. If you look at what's happened to our culture under the influence, every generation is becoming weaker and softer than the one before because of convenience. I'm looking at what's happening over here on this hill. You see they're logging? 37 years ago when I came here, they logged that. And when they did, they used chainsaws. And the wood was big enough to make saw logs. If you look at that, those trees now, they're really skinny. 
because clear cutting is not the way to manage a forest. And what's interesting up there? What's interesting up there now? You know what they're doing with all? They're chipping it all, making pulp because there's not, nothing big enough to, cut, to use for lumber. But you never see any human being on the ground working. It's all equipment. And can I can I can I tell you something interesting? In this community I live in, I've been here long enough that I knew loggers that logged when trees were six and four foot through with hand saws. That's what they were originally. And these guys at 80 are so functional, amazing, sharp guys. Today, these men running these equipment, at 40, their backs are going out, and they're not well. Connect the dots. We were made to lift and move and exercise. And what's so bizarre about our culture? Affluent, educated men pay t money to go into stagnant air gym to run on a treadmill. Are you hearing me? Stagnant air. It stinks in there. There's no ventilation. And they're running on a treadmill to get exercise to do nothing? Could we be, could we be more insane? I mean, when I do my lawn, I put in miles of walking. When I saw all that wood out there, I climbed the trees. I took it out in pieces. I split it. I put it in my tr I'm telling you, man, I got major exercise and there's money in the bank. It's good for me. And I did something positive. And I, it's, just, it's so insane how we're living, thinking like, we're affluent and we're better. And this is, I'm ahead. It's utter insanity. And the evidence, as you look at us, obesity and sickness and, and total weakness is evident. This affluence and convenience is not beneficial to the human race. We were created to lift and move. It's, if you look at how, how God is, see it, if you don't use it, you lose it. You hear me? You, you will never get strong except by re resisting. You ever look at Revelation? Every letter to the church at the end was, to him that overcometh will inherit all things, either the tree of life and on and on it goes. To overcome, you're having resistance. But that's design in nature. You don't get strong unless you overcome, push through. That builds strength, builds confidence. My wife's a midwife and it's so awesome how she's trained these women to have babies naturally. And they, they, I'm telling you, it's across the board. They, they send her cars and says, Carol, after having babies in the hospital, I can't believe how you empowered us. Mm -hmm. And see, God designed the birth process to empower women. Mm -hmm. It's by design. It's by intent. And they're the amazing mother bear because of that experience. Mm -hmm. and when you go to the hospital, you get an epidural, a, a, a C-section, you're not empowered. Mm -hmm. It's just, it's so huge how all these things that are being done to us are designed to weaken and make us less than our potential. It's just, it's huge. Amazing. Yeah. Here we are getting uh, weaker as a culture, that's for sure. Yeah. Like and it's swirling the drain, just waiting to be flushed. I know, and, it, and, it's, and it's, complete, it's completely unnatural. Yeah. It's not by design. Yeah. It's unnatural. Yeah. And I just, I mean, you know, I'm just not giving any place to it. I'm just not going there, man, because it's just not, not by design. Thank you. Yeah. Bless you. I agree. Amazing. Thank you very much. Yo, bless you. Thank you. Well, thank you so much. This was just wonderful. My pleasure. I love doing this because I just, I, you know, I, I was made for this, I think. Yeah. I mean, really. It's, it's your ministry. It is. It's what I was made for. And yeah. I just feel so blessed to, to see people, you know, get, getting reality, you know, kind of thing. I just like, thank you, God. You know? Like I said, it's, it's so neat to see all the world people doing this and people getting well. My wife, is, she teaches all the world. And she's in Israel. And she's sharing with in a class the importance of nutrition. In, in, in childbirth and able to prenatally growing. And so at the end of the class, this woman gets up and says, I gotta tell you, she's telling you the truth. My family had allergies and we were sick like across the board. And we saw her husband's film, we put in this back to Eden Garden. My family today has absolutely no illness, no allergies, and what she's saying is the truth. This is in Israel, you know. Is, you know, it's, it's so, I mean, she, my wife is very outgoing, very no, well known, and it's so, she goes all over the world and people know me. I mean, Paul's your husband? And she just busts up because she knows what a recluse I am. And I go nowhere. I have no computer, no cell phone. And I'm completely, you know, make a point to be unknown. And he says, everywhere I go, they know you. A true pleasure. I feel like I stepped right into that beautiful movie that was made. Uh, it's just like a, like a, I don't know. Step through the looking glass. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm so glad you came. We got yeah. to taste the movie. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. And it was pretty good. Yeah, it was. Really <laughs> good. Thank you, Paul. Oh, thank yeah, you. Bless, bless you. you. Thank you. A real thrill.
Thank you. Thank you. Well, bless you all. I'm so glad you came. And I just encourage you to, to realize it's all good. And, and don't be worried about bugs. They're okay. And, and you'll be good. But just, again, just connect. And, and, and something I'm just really helping in all your ways, just get a connection to talk to God. God, how would you approach this? What should I do here? You'll be amazed how helpful he is. He's really, really there for it. And again, you know, we have it because we don't ask. You know, he's given us a ministry, too, of, of holding food classes, of telling people about the nutrition awesome. and all of yeah. those things. And we've well, been doing and, it. And here's, and here's the word. You see, as soon as you said that, this is what I heard in the Spirit. My people perish for lack of knowledge. And see, you're bringing knowledge, education, to them so they don't perish. Yeah. It's huge. It's, I'm just telling you, man, it's so, and I, I'm so blessed by seeing what God's doing in these times. See, things are really not good on the planet, but God's doing, ama but he's doing amazing things that, that I've never seen him do before. And I'm so getting, this is his heart. You see, he's not willing that any perish, but all come to repentance. And how do you get there? It's the goodness of God that leads to repentance. As God is doing these amazing good things, just blessing people, bringing understanding, enlightenment, and help, it's... Um, bringing people to God. It's just, it's awesome. So it's just, it's an exciting time to be alive. And so, again, here's the reality. Whatever you focus on, focus on is, your, is your reality. As a man who thinks in their heart, so are they. So don't look at what the devil's doing. Don't look at things falling apart. Look what God's up to. He's doing really good stuff. And it's an amazing time to be alive. We have nothing to fear. Because the reality is until your appointed time, you can't be taken out. You have an appointment. And until that time comes, you are totally safe. Yeah. And my appointment comes, I'm out of here. I'm only feeling a stranger. I want to go home anyway because I, I, it's much better there. And so I got no, so there's nothing to no, fear. I don't know. How could it be much better? No, there? up there. Are you kidding? Do you, you realize what that place is like? This is heaven on earth. Yeah, but, but, that, but uh, it, I'm just telling you, man, it's, it's the ultimate there. And I'm looking forward to going home because it's just, you know, you know why? You know how I'm going to travel in heaven? At the speed of thought. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to enjoy that so much more than most of you because I move like this. Yeah. And so I'm looking forward to traveling at the speed of thought, man. It's going to be awesome. I'm going to get stuff done. <laughs> Big time, man. It's going to be awesome. We have a bigger garden. You can yeah. appreciate traveling more than we are because yeah. you haven't been able to do Well, you know, so see my wife travels and she, she goes to Israel and she loves that place. She says, Paul, I want you to come. I says, Carol, I'm going to be going there for the rest of my, for the next mm -hmm. thousand years mm -hmm. right. for all the feasts. I'm going to travel the speed of thought. Why well, want to go like this? This is no fun. I can wait. It's not going to be that long. <laughs> well, thank you so much. You're so welcome. It's thank you. Yeah, it's right. If you go past the house there, yeah. there's, a, there's a little building with it. Yeah, I saw it. Okay. Okay. Can you spell that squash for me that you have in your Butter, garden? Butternut? Oh, that just the, big, butternut? The, big, the big one is yeah. butternut. Yeah. Oh, it's just butternut. butternut. Oh. No, no, not butternut. That, no. not, excuse me. I'm so sorry. No, 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 no. no. The delicata, that's a small one, but the big, the big um, yellow one yeah. is banana squash. Oh, it's just a it's banana squash. It's a banana squash. squash. Okay, thank you. But delicata is a small one on, on the ground. Okay. Oh, but it's overgrown banana squash. Right? Yeah. <laughs> no, that's normal banana squash. <laughs> that's how God made it. It hasn't been shrunk. But yeah. he leaves it on his uh, outside Yeah, patio. What, what I do though with all my winter squash, I let a freeze happen first because that hardens them off, gives, gives the skin a real protective coating, mm -hmm. and they keep much better going through a frost. Mm -hmm. They store better, because it hardens them. Yeah. It's, it, it's, so it you really, leave them out there? I leave them until I get a frost, and then okay. the vine's all dead, so I just you know, I clean, it all, clean it all up and pack it off the good squash, and I'm good. And all the small ones the chickens get, you know? Yeah. All right, all right. Okay, good. Well, thank you so thank much. You. You're really so welcome. Nice thank, thank you, bless you. Yeah. Glad you could come. Oh. <laughs> I got a good. I got a good dad. You know, he's, he's really good. Can I get a photo with you? You may. Oh, sweet. Got it. Oh, thank, thank you. you. This is such a you. blessing. I've been wanting to come for years. So. Well, where do you live? I finally made it. Olympia, Washington. Okay, not yeah. far. I'm actually good friends with uh, Becky. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we've been chatting and all right had great. lunch and finally made it out so oh, good such a joy i'm glad you could come it's beautiful yeah thank, thank you, you so thanks much. for coming i've been getting alkaline water from a machine but yours is much better so i'm gonna fill it loaded up my water is good 7.3 and it's full of minerals it's really good water 7.3 7.3 out of the well and it's out awesome well. you know what was interesting you know my wife we had a three children in los angeles she had to take major calcium supplements when she came here, she had five children, uh, no, um, four children. 
She took no calcium. It's all in our water. This water is really very, very mineral rich. It's awesome good water. Yeah. I feel so thankful when you, when you, when you consider this air I'm breathing and this amazing water and all this food. In these times, I'm living in probably the most amazing place on the planet. Squim is the most beautiful place in the whole world. My but mom you, and dad lived here in the island. But, you, but you, you, know, you, know, you know the reality? Yeah. You know Bill Gates across the water over here? This multi-billionaire? Yeah. He is not eating food this good. No, I know. Even if he could get it, by the time it got to him, it's wilted in t more than 10 minutes. I'm just telling you, man, I'm living at a quality of life billionaires don't approach. I have such a good dad. Yes. He's awesome, He's man. It's just, it's, when you connect the dots, it's really awesome. Because <laughs> you could, listen to him. You give him yeah. the time yeah. you ask Well, him. I need help. I know it. I couldn't keep... We couldn't keep up with all the stuff coming out of the garden this year. We isn't it just, awesome? We just have a 10 by 50. Yeah, you know? but isn't it awesome? You're going to find that each year yeah. it gets more because and, that's the design. And kind of like your garden, you know, you just have stuff pop up and grow. I had this beautiful plant yeah. um, that it, all these beautiful purple flowers grew on the stem. Maybe even know what it is. And then the other branches kind of went out like this. And it had uh, real waxy leaves, and I don't know what it was, but anyway, it's just this gorgeous plant. I've never seen it before, and I couldn't identify it online. I tried, but anyway, it was just neat. So I let it grow. Finally, it, it did. Uh, it did die, but maybe because I, well, I don't know why. It's okay. Everything has a season. But what I th I'm so enjoying, like, is all these things that just show up. I'm not planning. They're really good. Yeah. And again, I'm so seeing. That's God. He just likes to bless, you know. And if you have a healthy environment, they can grow there. Yeah. You notice the top of this? Yeah. Call this mullen. Mullen. Yeah, this is mullen. Yeah, you were going to come over. Yeah. Very unique yeah. design okay. to it. That's yeah. That makes sense. Okay. And yeah. straight down on the top of it, it mm -hmm. spirals. Mm -hmm. Let me see. Um, it's, <laughs> what is that plant oh, good for? It, this mullen and garlic okay. make a really good um, treatment for ear infections. Oh, okay. Native Americans use it as a poultice, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like a bandage for leaves. I had an infection in my colon a couple of weeks ago. It was such bad pain I couldn't stand it. And they gave me two really bad on antibiotics. But uh, but they say I can't eat seeds. And stuff garlic. Like yeah. Garlic is amazing. Just garlic. Really garlic is an is a is a antibiotic. It's an it's an inflammatory. It takes a, it takes a lot of inflammation. It's antihistamine. It's an insect. It does so many things. So should I just crush it and put it in our juice? In just the morning, eat it. Put it. In, put it in all the foods you want, and just watch things change in your gut. I had a. I had. I, had, I worked for a guy who who had um, high blood pressure, and they gave him a drug that almost killed him. The side effects almost killed him. Oh yeah, there's some bad ones. And he took garlic every day, and ate a clove, like and main. Yeah, and maintained perfect blood pressure till he died. Garlic will totally bring down. I mean, garlic is amazing food. That. It's huge because benefits. I'm still in pain. I'm trying to drink alkaline water. And pray, pray. Father, what foods can I eat okay. to settle my stomach? I just keep thanking him for my healing. Thank yeah, him. And, but ask him, right. what should I eat? And he, he made those foods, cucumbers and tomatoes. Here's and the tomatoes. word. He created leaves mm -hmm. for the healing of the nations. Yeah. Leaves are produce. It's a huge. It's something in our colon. It's something in her colon, and it might, uh, she has some diverticula, diverticula. Again, the, the, the whole issue, though, is malnutrition. If you're eating good food, that all heals, because your body is created to be renewing constantly new cells and new organs, new everything. Mm -hmm. And if you're just, you're eating good, good produce, that's going to heal everything. And I'm, I'm just, I, I know from experience, I remember when I had all these issues that I don't anymore. And it's, I'm telling you, and it's just amazing how it's changed. And I, and I so get. Kombucha just comes to mind. You know what kombucha is? Mm -mm. You should look it up on the internet. It's, 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 the most, it's, it's a drink that you can make that has every single B vitamin, including 12, and all kinds of digestive enzymes that totally balance out your gut. It's just well, amazing. Yeah, K kombucha, K-O-M-B-U-C-H-A. You can make your own. You can, I, I've been making it for 28 years. I wouldn't live without it. What do you put in it? It's created by, by green, I use green tea and sugar, but you have to have a start, a SCOBY, and kombucha to start with. Once, once it's going, I've been making it for 28 years, and I would not live without it. K-O-M-B-U-C-H-A. Okay. Look on the internet, get connected, but I'm just, I really believe, that, I'm, that, that just came to me, I, I just really believe that would do, um, I've had people come here, a man came here who says his wife cannot eat any food with him without taking major digestive enzymes, and she's always sick. 
I said, this will change your life. In three weeks, he calls me back. He says, I can't believe it. my wife's eating everything. Wow. And I mean, this, it changed everything. It's huge. And again, all disease starts in the gut, all of it. And it's because we have no gut flora. You know why you have no gut flora? Because your food is no good. All your dairy products and all your meat products are fed antibiotics that are killing your gut flora. You need to eat fermented foods like sauerkraut, kimchi, you know, kombucha. I read that and I thought that was sorry, what I needed too. It's huge. And, and you know the Bible talks about fermented foods, mm -hmm. the importance? You know, you know that? It's in a very familiar verse that we don't connect. It says, Paul writing to Timothy, his son of the faith, says this, Timothy, drink a little wine for your stomach's sake and your often infirmities. What he's saying is, Timothy, you're sick all the time because you're getting no nutrition from your food because you have no gut flora. If you drink a little wine, fermented food, that will establish and bring in gut flora. You'll get nutrition from your food and you'll get well. I'm just telling you, man, it's huge. And you know what's so interesting about gut flora? You're going to love this as a woman. Babies growing in the womb have no gut flora. It's not there. You know how it's seeded in the womb? In the baby? As, as the baby comes down the birth canal, the fluid in the birth canal, the baby takes into its mouth and that seeds and begins the gut flora in the stomach. As the baby is breastfed, that continues to feed it. So track with me. Babies born today, cesarean, have no gut flora. And you wonder why they're all sick with allergies? It's huge. It's across the board amazing how God designed all these features in our bodies to have such amazing, powerful effects. It's huge. So I really, I really believe in my spirit, kombucha would make a major difference for you. You can buy it in the store. The problem with the stuff in the store is that it's pasteurized, it's not live. It's ideal to make your own. But, I, but I'm just telling you, man, I, I, I've seen it do. I had a woman come here from, from Alaska who had a heart condition. I don't know what it was. But I gave her kombucha, got her started making it. She writes me in about six months. She says, I just come back, came back from the cardiologist. And he had this most incredible look on his face. He says, Edie, what are you doing? Your heart's normal. And she says, Paul, nothing changed in my life except I started making kombucha. And by the way, I'm not having to take any, ana any antacids. I can die. She's just so blown away how this kombucha healed her heart condition and totally, totally settled her stomach. It was powerful. Mm, okay, you made some by accident before, too. Iced tea, or just tea set at room temperature and got some sugar in it. Mm -hmm. My son did that and left it on the back of the piano, and he came back like a month later and had a scoby on the top. Oh, awesome! We were like, wow, <laughs> yeah. so he started feeding it. And yeah, it's just, it's just again, again, all these. See, these are all things God created in nature to support and feed us and give us good health. It's all God. It's huge. So I really, I, I really sense that that was not that was a spontaneous thought from the Father to really for you. That was not a K-O-M-B-U-C-H-A. Okay. Look it up on the internet, read about it, and get started making it. You can buy it you know, locally. Ideally, try to get stuff that's not pasteurized, but I really believe that's going to make a major change you. in your body. But you do now. I just know this is, God is not coincidental. He, he's, he's very, very real. And He doesn't do stuff haphazardly. He's really real. And He says He's an ever-present help in every time of need. He's present and he's here, and I really think that was significant. Thank you, Paul. You're so welcome. For the um, pruning class in, in the, January, call me. Because I, I don't know, it'll, it'll, it'll be happening multiple days for the whole month, depending on weather, you know, kind of thing. And when people come, so just call, we'll just connect the time, and you're welcome to come. Okay, and it's fun. I make it, it's so, it's so easy when you see how simple it is, yeah. you know, and it's just, and the beauty about pruning is, is it just shows the Father, you can really mess it up. But every year it comes back, gives you new options. Just like our lives. <laughs> I, it's, it's, just, it's just, it's so fun, you know, and so you, and, and then every year you get new, like, oh, wow, look at that, I have this whole river back, this, this will grow and all, this will fill. So it's always like this amazing, awesome experience. I just so enjoy pruning. I uh, pruned, uh, there was two peach trees um, over on this property, that, uh, her ex-husband's property. So I came over to prune one of his peach trees because we'd go over and we yes, get peaches and we appreciate it. So I said, you know, I'm gonna come over and prune your trees, you know, and they'll be better next year. So I went over and pruned, and uh, 
Oh, that's it was just favorite. incredible. I mean, they kind of look like your tree up there. They were just all opened up. Yeah. All the leaves, all the junk is off. Isn't that Every nice? Branch and you can just feel the tree says, I can breathe now. Yeah. Ah, I feel so good. I'm exposed to light and sun, you know. It's just... But that other one, I didn't get the other one done because uh, there was so much work just doing yeah. one tree. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was like I did, I don't know, it wasn't eight hours. But it's a lot of work, yeah. Especially hours. when it hasn't been done for years. You got a lot of yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But at least it gave you it gave you a, a visual of the powerful potential, you know. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Now do you grow your own garlic and yeah. beans and oh, yeah. things like that? Mm -hmm. oh. I grow as much as I can because just because of it's nutrient dense. I I'm not gonna buy stuff like that. You know, it's just the best. So